national anthem here at Howard Bo Warren Field. We are set for game three. Pitching matchup again, Ford Townsend Jr. on the mound for Wayne County. And on the mound for Buford is a young sophomore. His name is Sean Adams, number 30, and 5 foot 10, 150. The left-handed pitcher for Buford, and he heads to the mound because they are the home team in this third and decisive game of this series. So hard to figure, still don't understand the rule, but that is the rule. They flip the coin, and Buford gets to be the home team in game three. Defensively for Buford, at first base, Noah Ledford. Second base, Griffin Price. Third base, Akira Mitchell. Shortstop, Grant James. Right fielder, Christian Griffin. Left fielder, Garrison Price. And in center field, a very talented baseball player, just a sophomore, Austin Turner. Again, strong wind blowing out from right to left again here this afternoon at Howard Bill Warren. Hopefully Wayne County can jump out early, get a big lead, and a roll on to victory here in game number three. So, again, Coach McDonald, Coach Mullis didn't get much sleep last night, stayed up late, putting together the scouting report for today's game, going over everything that happened in games one and two, what worked, what didn't work. So, again, a lot of hours put in preparation for this game three. So it's junior four times and against sophomore Sean Adams. And again, Buford won the toss, elected to be the home team here in the third and decisive game, four and a half away from their own ballpark. Makes absolutely no sense, but it is what it is. So hopefully Wayne County scores about seven runs in the first inning and never look back. Hopefully that's the game plan. Mason Robertson will lead it off. What a dramatic home run in game two. The two seniors really stepped up in game two. Mason with a three-run home run to put it away. And Joshua Gordon, again, a 12-strikeout performance, three-hitter against Buford High School. Can't say enough about that complete game performance by senior Joshua Gordon. Plus, he had a home run in game one. So the seniors really stepped up big yesterday. The Wayne County Griffin boy can have a lot of hits in the series, as did Kate Lambert. Marlin had a couple of key hits. Cooper Martin had a couple of key hits. So Ford had the big triple. See how it goes today. Hopefully the bats will be alive and well for Wayne County in Game 3. Wayne County and Buford. Mason steps in to lead it off for Wayne County High School. Mason Robertson, Josh Gordon, four times in the top three hitters in the lineup. Wind up and the pitch and run away and it's a low ball. One and oh. One ball, no strikes. Wayne County and Buford Game 3 on a Saturday afternoon. Crowd continues to build here as we speak. One ball, no strikes to pitch, and that's low ball to two and up. Again, just wonder what kind of nerves going through the young sophomore's mind out there for Buford. Sean Adams. Again, they used a lot of pitchers yesterday. 2-0 pitch, a pie ball, 3-0. Three, three Wayne County looking to get the leadoff man on. Early momentum would be big in this series. Coach McDonald at third, Coach Mullis at first base, 3-0 to Mason, and that's in for a strike, 3-1. Three balls, one strike to lead off batter Mason Robertson, senior shortstop for Wayne County. The 3 1 pitch. And it's in for strike two. Three and two on the corner. So he comes back to run it full. Three two. Big payoff pitch early here, first inning. And he throws that one in the dirt. And Mason's on his way to first base. Lead off walk for the Yellow Jackets, always a good sign in high school baseball. Here's Joshua Gordon. And number nine, the over Joshua Gordon. See how the coaches want to play it. Coach McDonald flashed the signs to Mason Robertson and Joshua Gordon. And come join us if you're in the area. Come watch this third and decisive, exciting game three. Stretch and the pitch, and it's in for a strike. Gordon showing bunt, but pulls back. In for a strike, no balls, one strike. Sean Adams, left-handed pitcher for Buford High School. Mason, a big lead at first base. And not going, pitches down low. Bounces a little ways from the catcher, but not far. Counts one ball, one strike to Joshua Gordon. One ball, one strike, nobody out. Runner on, top of the first, Mason Roberts. 1-1 1-1 one, one pitch. In for strike. One and two. Four times in today's pitcher on deck. One ball, two strikes. Mason at first, nobody out. 
One two pitch. Ground ball, middle slow roller. They're going to flip to second for one on the first. And on, in time, they throw it away. Josh going to second, throw down to second base, and he's going to be tagged out. They'll be dropping the ball. They drop the ball safe at second base. So we got a runner at second base, one down. Mason stopped in between to avoid any possible running to the second baseman. Second baseman threw it by the first baseman. They throw it down to second base, and they drop the ball. Coach is going to say he dropped it coming out of his glove, but the umpire says no. Safe at second base is Joshua Gordon. So Wayne County's got a runner at second base, one down on the fielder's choice, and the error by Buford. And here's Fort Townsend. Number 20, pitcher, Good hustle by Joshua Gordon to beat out the double play. And they threw it wide first base, and Josh took off the second. And fortunate to be there. And if the second baseman holds on to the ball, it's two outs, nobody on. But instead, it's a runner at second base, one out, and four times under the plate. And that's low ball one. One out. One ball, no strikes, one out. Game three, Wayne County Buford here at Howard Bowl Warren on a Saturday afternoon. Beautiful day for baseball here. The 1 0 pitch. And that's in for a strike, 1 1. James Modlin on deck for Wayne County. One ball, one strike, one out. Sean Adams, the pitcher. The 1 1 pitch. A pie, ball two, two and one. Two balls, one strike, one out. No score, top of the first. Wayne County again, the visiting team in game number two. 2-1 two, pitch. Swung on and foul straight back. 2-2 two two to Fort Townsend. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Four times at the plate for Wayne County. James Maldon on deck. Stretching the 2-2 pitch. Round ball, hitting the hole, deep in the hole, back by the left fielder. Here comes Charles Gordon to score. Wayne County reaches 1-0. There's the momentum early. The ball got through the hole, and Coach McDonald waving Josh Gordon all the way. 1-0 Wayne County in the top of the first. Four times an RBI single to get Griffin Clark to run for him at first base as he's the pitcher in today's game. The four times and finds the left side of the infield and gets it through the hole between the third baseman Mitchell and the shortstop Grant James. And Josh Gordon again getting the green light comes home to score and Wayne leads it one nothing early here in game number three. Here's James Marvin still just one out in the inning. Again, a big inning would be sweet for Wayne County here in game three. There's a ball hit foul towards first. No ball was one strike. James Marvin, cleanup hitter. Went 0 for 4 in game number 2. Game number 1, 1 for 4. One hit in the series thus far for James. But again, he's capable. Has had a big bat all year. The pitch... There's a fly ball hit the center, but Turner's there, and there's two away. And the ball hit well, but right to Austin Turner, two up t- or two away in the inning. Brings up Cade Lambert. Right fielder for Wayne County. Right fielder, Cade Lambert. And Lambert's come up big the last couple weeks with his bat. Had a couple hits yesterday in the series. Griffin Clark leads the first base. See what we do with two outs here. It was stretch. And throw to first, and Griffin Clark's back in time. And just a gorgeous day for baseball. Again, the breeze is blowing pretty good from right to left. The sunshine skies, temperatures in the 70s. Good day for baseball. Throw to first again, Griffin Clark is back. one nothing Wayne County. Early here in game number three. Adams ready to stretch the pitch to Cade. And Cade fouls away. No balls, one strike. Cooper Martin would be next. No balls, one strike, two outs. Sean Adams with the strike. And the pitch to Cade Lambert. That's a low ball one. One and one. One ball, one strike, two outs. 
Sean Adams, the pitcher, sophomore for Buford. The 1 1 pitch. Swing and a strike two. 1 and 2. One ball, two strikes, two outs, one run in. Griffin Clark still at first base. See if they send him with two strikes on the count. Throw to first. Buford thinks he's going. Griffin Clark's back in time. One ball, two strikes, two odds. One nothing Wayne County here in game three. Top of the first with a visiting team in game three. The one-two pitch. Up high, ball two. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Wayne County one, Buford zero here in game three. The two-two to Cage Lambert. Down low in the dirt, ball three, three and two. Full count to Cade Lambert. Griffin Clark will be off on the pitch. Two outs in the inning. Three balls, two strikes. There he goes. There's the pitch. Fly ball to center again. Austin Turner there, and the inning comes to an end. Your score at the end of the half inning, Wayne County 1-0. They score one run, one hit, one air, one man left on base. Hit to the bottom of the first, Wayne County 1. Buford coming to bat. One of the worst feelings in the world is when your vehicle lets you down and leaves you stranded on the side of the road. Well, put your mind at ease because Grant Lewis Towing is available 24 hours a day with towing service locally or long distance. When you need a tow, call a pro. Call Grant Lewis Towing at 427-0857. You heard right. When you need a tow, call the pro and put your mind at ease. No time to stress. It's no longer a mess. Help us just phone call away. Grant Lewis Towing, over 40 years experience and available whenever needed. Call Grant Lewis Towing for all your towing needs. Again, the number 427-0857. Call Grant Lewis by request. The number to call 427-0857. Stop gradual harassment today. Stop the worry of a pending repossession, garnishment, or foreclosure. Contact the Bankruptcy Group, Attorney R. Flay Cabinets, for an experienced assessment of your financial situation. They have locations in Brunswick, Hazelhurst, and now Jessup. They are a debt relief agency. They help people file for bankruptcy relief. Contact legal assistant Tanya Blanton at 912-375-5620. 375-5620 to set up your free consultation. Let the Bankruptcy Group do the worrying for you. Now serving Jessup. Hi, this is Jackie Dean from Hinesville Home Center. We at Hinesville Home Center want to wish the Yellow Jackets a successful season. So come see me, Jackie Dean, at Hinesville Home Center on the big curb as you come into Hinesville or call me at 912-876-2215. That's 912-876-2215. Remember, I will beat other dealers' prices. So come see me. Go Jackets. Wayne County Baseball brought to you by the Interstate Credit Union, Southside Automotive, and Sybil's Family Restaurant. Leisure Crowley and umpires and Coach McGall already having a discussion about something going on. And I'm sure it's about those people in the bleachers over there in J.C. Stadium. So I'm sure they're going to probably get those out of there. Again, you got people sitting in the football bleachers, and apparently that seems to be the issue here. Buford coach upset. Things are being said. So they're going to Coach McDonald. So they're going to clear those people out of there, I'm sure. Got to come pay your $10, folks. Got to come through the gate. Or $7 today. I'm sorry, $7 today. Again, I feel for Coach McDonald because he, it's not his control. He doesn't have control for all this stuff that he's getting discussed with. Here we go, bottom of the first. Austin Turner leads it on for Buford, followed by Garrison Price and Noah Ledford. Four Townsend, junior pitcher. Need a good effort from him. Turner, the dangerous hitter, the leadoff batter for Buford, steps in. Four Townsend ready to stretch the pitch, and it's in for a strike. No balls, one strike. It's fastball to start. Yeah, and we just need four times and to be four times and, and we'll be a okay. The 0 1 pitch, and for strike two, 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes. Forward ready, the 0 2 pitch. A little low, ball one, 1 and 2. One ball, two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. Bottom of the first of the home team in game three, we lead at 1 nothing. The one-two pitch, breaking pitch, strike three, struck him out. Good breaking pitch by four times, and one up, one down in the bottom of the first. 
That's the start we're looking for. It's Turner looking on a breaking pitch. There's Garrison Price. Junior, four towns and one up, one down. Bottom of the first, got a big out in Turner. Pitches in for a strike. No balls, one strike. Talked to Carl Rose, one of the better pitchers come through Wayne in a long time. He said the key to winning games is keeping the leadoff batter off base. The hit one pitch, swung on right back to Ford Townsend. Ford kicks it away, though, and it's going to be safe in first base. There was a one hopper. Ford went to pick it up and kicked it instead of being able to reach it. So at first base is the time running Garrison Price. And it'll go as an error on the pitcher. So, again, one on, one out for Noah Ledford, the first baseman. Leopard. Tough break there. Again, a little one hopper, but Ford wanted to pick it up and wound up kicking it instead of getting it with his glove and kick it toward the first base line. Again, they were very aggressive on the base pass yesterday. We'll see how they play it here. Time run at first base with their left fielder, Garrison Price. Big left handed first baseman, left foot at the plate. Pitch is down low, ball one. 1 0. On deck to DH, Reese McIntyre. Bottom of the first, game three, Wayne County, Buford. Junior, four towns and on the mind for Wayne County. Forwards, 1 0 pitch. Popped up, foul, out of play. 1 and 1. One ball, one strike, one out. Bottom of inning number one, one nothing, Wayne County. Four towns and one ball, one strike count to Noah Ledford. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Runners going. Fly ball. Left field. Not deep. Left fielder. Josh Gordon is there. Two away. In the second. Brings up the DH, Reese McIntyre. Yeah, McIntyre didn't do much yesterday at all. Pretty much held him in check. Struck out several times against Josh Gordon. And struck out several times against J.T. Cross. One ball, no strikes here to him. With the runner first, two down. Breaking pitch, swung on a miss, strike one. One and one. One ball, one strike, two outs. Junior Ford Townsend again pitched game three against Cartersville two years ago and pitched a great game. Need a great game here today. The 1 1 pitch, runners going, check swing, foul ball, one ball, two strikes, runners got to go back. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Again, Wayne County couldn't have written any better for game three to start four towns. He's been the dominant pitcher most of the year for Wayne County. Pitched game one in the first series. And now the home plate umpire talking to four times about something. Yes, he said he got away for the home plate umpire to be ready. One ball, two strikes, the pitch. A pie, ball two, two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. One nothing Wayne County, bottom of the first. Four times and stares in. The 2 2 pitch. Breaking pitch, swing and miss. He struck him out. Mosley tags him. Inning comes to an end. Two strikeouts in the first for four times. In the inning, no runs, no hits. One air, one left. After one, it's 1 0 Wayne County. Communication is the key when it comes to business, especially your financial business. That's why Ultimaha Federal Credit Union makes communication a priority, making banking easier for you. AFCU has money to lend, and it's easy to apply online or with a quick phone call. Your local credit union with open lines of communication. Ultimaha Federal Credit Union. Jessup, Scriven, and Ludowisi. Visit Ultimaha.org. Equal housing lender, federally insured by NCUA. Does your car or truck need a paint job, body repair, or even a tow? Call the experts at Lightsey's Body Shop. Family owned and operated since 1978. With a courteous, knowledgeable, and professional staff will meet all your needs at Lightsey's Body Shop, where everybody is somebody. Call us today. Let us take the stress away. We are located at 1526 Rainier Road, just past the dollar store. Give us a call at 385-6193. That's 385-6193. Lightsey's Body Shop. 
Stop by Southside Automotive for major and minor mechanical repairs. Diagnostic testing, tune-ups, oil changes, brakes. Southside Automotive is the place for quality repairs and prompt service. Make sure your AC is working its best for this hot summer. Joey says stop by today, we'll take care of you. If you want the best in automotive services, stop by Southside Automotive on 301 South in Chesham. Call 427-9653 at 427-9653. Southside Automotive. Wayne County Baseball brought to you by Sheffield's Trophies and Sports Shop and Poison Erectors. Tom the second, Cooper Martin leads it off for Wayne County, followed by J.T. Crosby, then D.H. Griffin Boykin. And with his support, it'll be David Mosley batting for himself in the number nine spot. Good outing in the first for four times and two strikeouts and no hits. Here's Cooper Martin, second baseman for Wayne County, to face Sean Adams. Line the pitch, and it's on the corner, strike one. No balls, one strike. And Cooper did a fake tag in game two yesterday, which apparently is an illegal play. He can't do it. And he got berated by the umpire, which a lot of people are upset about how the umpire handled the situation. I mean, it's one thing to go talk to him and tell him you can't do it, but the way he ran after him and pretty much yelled at him just didn't go and sit well with Wayne County coaches at all. One ball, one strike. Cooper Martin, second baseman, the 1-1 pitch. Popped up, fouled out of play, one and two. And made a great play behind second base bag for an out. Had a chance to make another great play, but he slipped and fell in short right field. Where he might have made that play as well. And just a sophomore had a couple of key hits in yesterday's doubleheader. The one-two pitch. Down low in the dirt ball to two and two. Again, he's the one that worked that walk in that seventh inning in that Jones County game three, which started that big out, big inning, big rally where we scored two and one at five four in the bottom of the seventh. Two balls, two strikes, two two pitch to Cooper. That's a low ball three, three and two. And Adams walked the first batter in the first, we scored a run, see so we can do the same thing here in inning number two. Three balls, two strikes. The three two pitch. Swung on and fouled out of play. Count remains full, 3 2 to sophomore Cooper Martin. Again, on deck, JT Crosby. What a great game he pitched in that first game. Really pitched well enough to win. And Griffin Boykin with a big day to play the DH with several hits in the doubleheader. Payoff pitch. Down low, ball four, leadoff man on again for Wayne County to start the second. And again, good speed in Cooper Martin. Second walk given up by the youngster, Sean Adams. you got to believe that sophomore's feeling a little bit of pressure here in game three. But he's on the mound in game three for Buford. Cooper at first base, nobody out. J.T. Crosby at the plate had a double yesterday, showing bunt here. And he's going to bunt, bunts it in the air, but it falls to the ground for strike one. No ball was one strike to J.T. Crosby. And Crosby had the double in the gap. In game two. Again, excellent performance on the mound in game number one. No balls, one strike. Again, showing bunt and pitches up high, ball one. One and one. D.H. Griffin Boykin on deck. One ball, one strike. Nobody out. Runner at first, top of the second. Again, visiting team here in game three. JT again showing bunt and does bunt down the first base side. JT's going to hustle and again a nice play by the pitcher for the out at first base. But a good bunt by JT Crosby has Cooper Martin at second base with one down. Almost beat it out for a hit again. But a great play by Adams. Him being a lefty really benefited him for that play. If he's a right handed pitcher, he can't make that play. But he was able to get the ball and flip it all in one motion. Here's Griffin Boykin. Again, what a day he had yesterday. Five hits in that doubleheader. Here's the stretch and the pitch. And it's up high, ball one. One ball, one of those strikes. David Mosley again on deck, going to bat for himself. And then the top order, Mason Robertson. Scored a run in the first, looking for a run or more here in the second. Again, early momentum is what the doctor orders here in game three. One ball, no strikes. The stretch, the pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. One and one to Griffin Boykin. Wayne County's Cooper Martin at second base, one away. Griffin Boykin at the plate against Sean Adams, the lefty. Stretch in the one-one pitch, 
Swing and a miss, strike two, one and two. One ball, two strikes to Griffin Boykin. Cooper Martin at second. Adams ready from the stretch. The one-two pitch. Call strike three. And there's two outs in the end. Brings up David Mosley, going to bat for himself here with a runner at second base, two outs. And number 26, is David Mosley. First strike out in the game for Adams. Here's David Mosley. And hasn't had a lot of bats on the varsity level, but gets the start here today in that lineup. Pitch to him. His outside ball one, one and up. Mason Robertson on deck. But understand, on the JV level, a good bat, David Mosley. One ball, no strikes, two eyes. The 1 0 pitch. Down low, bounces away. Cooper's coming to third, thinking about coming home, but he's going to stay right there at third base. So, runner at third and 2 0 count to David Mosley. And that ball got away from the catcher and came all the way over here by the dugout. And Cooper was thinking about heading to home, but and good recovery by Haynes, the catcher. Two balls, no strikes to David Mosley. Top of the second, the 2-0 pitch, high and outside, ball three. And yeah, that one almost got away from the catcher. It could have been two nothing Wayne count. Three and zero to David Mosley. Young sophomore's 3-0 pitch. In for a strike, 3-1. and one. Three balls, one strike, two outs. Shot Adams, 3-1 pitch. In for strike two, 3-2. Three and two. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. The 3-2 pitch. Swung on and foul back. Full count again. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner third. Important run here. Golden opportunity for Wayne County to take a 2 nothing lead. See if David Mosley can find a base hit or draw a walk and get Mason to the plate. 3-2 pitch on the way. Swung on and foul back again by David Mosley. Hanging tough. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Top of the second. Wayne one, Buford zero. Here's the payoff pitch. Call strike three, and he comes to an end. David's going to pull the trigger, and Adam strikes out the last two batters. In the inning, no runs, no hits, no errors. We strand the base runner. We head to the bottom of the second. It's Wayne one, Buford zero. Hey, y'all, this is Chelsea with Magic Mattress. I want to invite y'all to come check us out when you're in the market for your next mattress. At Magic Mattress, our lower overhead allows us to offer you lower prices on brands you know and trust. With our easy financing options, including 90 days same as cash, we can send you home tonight to rest great in your new bed. Magic Mattress is locally owned and family operated in downtown Jessup. Come down and see us at 109 West Cherry Street. Call us today at 912-256-REST. That's 912-256-7378. Sheffield's Trojan Sports Shop is ready for the season. If you're looking for your favorite team's apparel, Sheffield's is the place to be. Sheffield's is your Under Armour location, has specials on shirts and shoes. Sheffield's has your bats, balls, helmets, score, anything your team needs. Sheffield's has you covered and is ready to outfit you and your entire team. Sheffield's also helps you after the season with trophies and flags for the year, end of the party, or banquet. Sheffield's Trojan Sports Shop serving Wayne and surrounding counties for years. Whatever the sport, whatever the season, Sheffield's has you covered. Stop by or call at 427-2982. Sheffield's Trojan Sports Shop, a true winner when it comes to sporting goods. At Paul Fig Ben Chevrolet, you never need to wait for a sale to save. Right, Paul? Heck no, boy. With our right here, right now attitudes and these huge PTC discounts and GM rebates on top, we're ready to do work to earn your business today. Don't forget about the best finance rates. Yeah, you right there, cuz. We got the best finance rates in South Georgia. Selection? We stacking them deep and selling them cheese, cheese, cheese every day. Find new roads at Paul Fig Ben Chevrolet in Vidalia. 
Wayne County Baseball, brought to you by the Altamaha Federal Credit Union and Bridges and Bowes Boutique. Wayne County 1-0 as we hit the bottom of the second. Nathan Haynes, Kira Mitchell, Griffin Price for Buford here in the second. The five, six, and seven years to face four, four times. And four with two strikeouts in inning number one. And the breaking pitch working nicely for the strikeout pitch. Here's Haynes, the catcher. Pitch is caught with a ball. One ball, no strikes. Good looking pitch on the outside corner, but the man on the blue says it missed. One ball, one no strikes. The 1 0 pitch. Swung on and foul back, 1 and 1. Haynes had a doubleheader in the first game. A solo shot in inning number two. He went two for four in game number one. And went 0 for three with two strikeouts in game two. One ball, one strike, four times the pitch. Breaking pitch. Pretty the call ball two. Two and one. Good looking pitch. Two balls, one strike. The two one pitch. And that's called ball three. Where in the world were those two pitches? Three balls, one strike. Three one pitch. Outside ball four. Lead off walk to start the second for Buford. Here comes Akira Mitchell, the third baseman. Runner for the catcher, number 36, KJ Johnson. KJ Johnson going to run for the catcher, Nathan Haynes. Batting number five for baseman Akira Mitchell. And Haynes, 6'3, 220 as a catcher. Akira Mitchell, the third baseman, steps in. Runner at first base, nobody out. And again, players have to be inside the dugout. Yeah, he knows them well. They're bosom buddies. One nothing game, four thousand on the mound. Stretching the pitch. Round ball, base hit down in the corner. KJ Johnson coming to third. They're gonna wave him. Here comes the throw. It is not in time. And again, it tied 1-1. One, one. A double for Mitchell in the corner. And Johnson hustles all the way around first to tie it 1-1. One, one. Here's Griffin Price, the second baseman. Four times and stares in, has a sign. The pitch. Fly ball, right center field, pretty well hitting, but he can get there, yes. Right field, okay, Lamb gets there, here comes the throw to third, and the runner reaches third. Nice running catch in right by Kate Lambert. Mitchell comes to third. Here's Grant James, shortstop. One and one. Bottom of a second. Wayne County, Buford. And Wayne County is going to try to peel second base, say that he left early. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to say save the second base. So again, 1-1 one, one game, runner third, one down, bottom of the second. Grant James, the shortstop at the plate against four times, an infield drawn in. The pitch, and he's down low, ball one. One and up. Christian Griffin, the right fielder on deck for Buford. One ball, no strikes, one out. Runner at third base, bottom of the second, 1-1 one, one game. The 1-0 one pitch from four times, breaking pitch, in for a strike. One and one. One ball, one strike, one out. The one-one pitch. They 
they lay down a bunt. It's a good bunt. Ford Fields it throws the first. Batters out, but they got a 2 1 lead. So Buford takes the lead 2 to 1 here in a second. Two outs, nobody on. Here's Christian Griffin, the right fielder. So Buford rallies for two in the bottom of the second. They have a 2 1 lead. Right fielder Christian Griffin to play the pitch. And that's in for a strike. No balls, one strike. 2 1 Buford here in the second. Again, they're the home team in game three. They lead it 2 1. Pitch is up high. Ball one. One and one. One ball, one strike, two outs. Wayne County trailing two to one. The one one pitch. And another bump down the third baseline. JT bare hands it through. It's bottom time. Infield hit for Christian Griffin. Brings up Austin Turner. Strike out, picked him back in the first inning. Again, Griffin, the number nine here, lays down a perfect bunt. Again, JT really had no play. So another runner on base here in the bottom of the second inning in a 2-1 game in favor of Buford. Game three. Four times already the stretch, the pitch. Breaking pitch low, ball one. One and oh. One ball, no strikes, two outs. Four times already, the 1-0 pitch. Outside, ball two, two and oh. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. Runner first base, Christian Griffin. Forward, ready, the 2-0 pitch. Foul, out of play, 2-1. Two balls, one strike, Austin Turner. And yeah, what a day he had in game one. Three run, a home run, three run triple. Two balls, one strike, two outs. Ford ready, the 2 1 pitch. Runner's going, pitched outside, and the runner will steal second base. Now it's 3 1 to Austin Turner. Three balls, one strike, two outs. Four times already with 3 1 pitch. Strike two, three and two. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner at second base, Buford two, Wayne County one, game three of the series. Bottom of the second, they are the home team here at Howard Bow Warren. The 3 2 pitch. Ground ball hit the first. James Mullins got the fair ball, and the inning comes to an end. But in the inning, Buford strikes for two runs. Two hits, no errors, one man left on base. We play two, new score, Buford two, Wayne County one. Two hits, no errors, one runner left on base. Is your checking account broke? These days, every little bit helps. So if you can eliminate monthly checking charges, why wouldn't you? At Interstate Credit Union, we'll help you afford everyday living with our low-to-no-cost products and services. Call 800-822-1124 or go online at iufcu.org to find out how to make checking work for you at Interstate Credit Union. Branches in Jessup, Baxley, Midway, and Hazelhurst. Federally insured by NCUA. Kim Boykin and Boykin Steel and Crane wish the Yellow Jackets the best of luck this season. And Boykin Steel and Crane's legacy will make your foundation stronger as they specialize in steel fabrication, industrial maintenance, steel erection, crane rentals, and concrete. Boykin Steel and Crane in operation just in the Wayne County since 1972. Jim Boykin has taken over the family business and continues to do what's best for his community. Boykin Steel and Crane located on the Savannah Highway in Jessup. The number to call is 427-7751. Boykin Steel and Crane. Again, wishing the Yellow Jackets the best of luck. When you become a customer at Prime South Bank, you'll become part of a team that has your back and is with you every step of the way in achieving your financial goals. Our doors opened in 1891. 125 years later, we are still going strong. Prime South is constantly bringing innovative and convenient banking solutions to our growing communities. And our customers, well, they are the real MVPs. In the bank or on the field, Prime South's game face is always on for you. Prime South Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. 
Wayne County Baseball, brought to you by Prime South Bank and Magic Mattress. Top of the order for Wayne County, top of the third, Mason Robertson leads it off, followed by Joshua Gordon four times. Sean Adams for his third inning of work again. He leads it two to one, has allowed just one hit. It's a dime, low ball one. Then it's walk two, struck out two. The base hit by four times in the left field, which drove in the run that Wayne County has on the board. Driving in Joshua Gordon in the top of the first. 2 1 Buford as they scored two in the second. Pitches in for a strike. 1 and 1 to Mason Roberts. Wayne County trailing 2 to 1 here at home, top of the third. Game scheduled for seven. On the baseball left, come join us. The 1 1 pitch. Down low in the dirt ball to 2 and 1. Two balls, one strike. Adams, 2-1 pitch. On the corner, strike two, two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Leadoff batter, Mason Robertson, the 2-2 pitch. Down a little dirt ball, three, three and two. Mason walked back in the first. Big payoff pitch here in the third. Three balls, two strikes. Round ball, second. Second baseman's got it, throws the first in time. There's one down in the third for Wayne County. Second. And then scored on the base hit by four times in the left field. Here's the pitch. And it's a high ball one. One out. Third game of the series. Winner plays Carrollton. Loser is out. One ball, no strikes, one out, the one-o pitch. Outside, ball two, two and oh. Two balls, no strikes. One out. Two oh pitch. Inside, ball three, three and oh. Three and oh to Joshua Gordon. Four times and waits on that. Three oh. Up high, ball four, and Josh Gordon's aboard. Third walk given up by Adams in the game. Brings up four times in the base at the left field. His first time up. Four times at the plate. Again, leads the team in home runs with eight with those two home runs yesterday by Josh Gordon and Mason Robertson in the Fairhaven Women's Shelter. The check from one more hospital now to a thousand dollars. It just way up high, ball one, one and zero. So again, great story. Wayne Memorial Hospital donating fifty dollars for every home run hit by Wayne County baseball player this year. The total now at a grand, the one thousand dollar check at the moment. Can still build more here today and hopefully next week. But a nice gesture for Wayne Memorial Hospital, a great cause in Wayne County, the Women's Fair Haven Shelter. And going to receive a $1,000 check at the moment by Wayne Memorial Hospital. Hopefully more. I'd like to make it 1050 right here with a home run to left by four towns and a 3-2 lead. Runner leads at first base. Josh Gordon, one ball, no strike. Four towns and set ready the pitch. And that's in for a strike. One and one. One ball, one strike, one out. Buford two, Wayne County one, the 1-1 one, one pitch. Throw to first instead, runners back in time. Again, we're in the third inning, top half. Wayne, the visiting team here in game number three. Trailing two to one. The one one pitch to four times. Up high, ball two, two and one. James Maubin on deck. Two balls, one strike, one out. The two one pitch. Fouled away, 2-2. Two, 2-2 two. Two and two to four times. And junior pitcher on the mound here in the all-important game number three. Wayne trails by a run, 2-1. to one. Joshua Gordon leads at first base, the stretch, and the 2-2 two, two pitch. Again, a throw to first, runners back in time. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Here's the stretch and the 2-2 two, two pitch. Way up high, ball three, three and two. Nine 
touchdown payoff pitch to four towns. They go throw one in this wheelhouse right here, and he can rip it out of here. Three balls, two strikes. One out. Is out of play. And four is still alive at 3 2. So another payoff pitch to four times. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Sean Adams, sophomore lefty on the mound for Buford. Three balls, two strikes, one out. The 3 2 pitch. Chopper to third. Third baseman's got it. Long throw to first base. Goes high over to first baseman's head. Runners moving up to second and third. Got a hold with Josh Gordon at third base. Wayne County gets another break. Mitchell throws an air mail over to first baseman's head. Runners at second and third. One out. Dan had plenty of time and took his time, but then he air mailed it over to the first baseman's head. Griffin and Clark will run at second base for four towns. And the coach from Buford on his way to the mound to talk to Sean Adams. James Marlin come to a play again. He's hit the ball hard on the place, but right at people. Time run at third. Go ahead and runner at second base for Wayne County here at the top of the inning number three. And again, I'm sure the coach is talking to Adams about falling behind in the count. And he seems to be under a lot of pressure out there on his mound. A big, important game. Has walked three already. Two errors now by Buford in this ball game. The first error in the first cost him a run. See if the error here in the third will cost him a couple. Again, Marlin, our cleanup hitter, James Marlin, has been hitting the ball extremely hard, but right at people. Need him to find the gap somewhere. See if James Marlin can find a base hit and drive in two and give us a 3 2 lead. Conversation on the mound is over. James Marlin in waiting for the first pitch. And time called. Because James Marlin wanted to reset. Josh Gordon at third the time run. Griffin Clark at second. The go ahead run. Breaking pitch in for a strike. No balls, one strike to James Mog. Cade Lambert on deck. One out in the inning in a 2-1 game, top of the third. Wayne looking to take the lead back here at home. 0-1 to James Marlin. Outside, ball one. One and one. One ball, one strike, one out. 2-1 game in favor of Buford. Wayne with a tying run at third. A go-ahead runner at second base. The 1-1 to James. Line. Second baseman can't handle it. All hands safe. We'll tie 2-2. Two, two. There's a ground ball in the middle. Headed for the hole. Second baseman got a glove on it but can't make a play. Goes as an infield hit for James Marlin. An RBI single. And Wayne County has got the game tied 2-2. Two, two. Another hard hit ball. And this time James Marlin gets rewarded with an infield hit. Here's Cade Lambert. Time, I'm sorry, the go-ahead runner now at third base. Another runner at first base here in the top of the third. But we're tied 2-2 in this all-important game number three. Cade Lambert, right fielder for Wayne County, made a nice running catch in right field last half inning. The pitch to him. Line, left field, base hit down in the corner. Wayne's got the lead. Here comes Marlin in the third. See if he gets the stop sign, he will. He's going to stop at third. Cade Lambert doubles in the corner. Wayne leads 3-2. Oh, how sweet it is. Cade Lambert continues his hot hitting and rips that ball into the corner in left field. RBI double for Cade Lambert. Wayne leads at 3-2. Runners at second and third and only one out. Here's Cooper Martin, second baseman. Wayne, three. Buford, two. Team refuses to die, refuses to quit. Continues to battle back time and time and time again. Here's Cooper Martin. Buford brings the infield in. Three, two, Yellow Jackets, top of the third. Cooper pops it up, foul, and out of play. On deck, J.T. Crosby. 
No balls, one strike, one out. Wayne, three. Buford, two. Top of the third. Runners in scoring position, second and third, one out. Pitch to Cooper. In for a strike, 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes, one out. Cooper Martin, sophomore. Can he deliver? Swings and misses. Catcher has to throw it down to first base and does. And out number two recorded in the inning. JT Crosby's time. Wayne needs a clutch hit here to take a 5 2 lead. Two big runners in scoring position. JT Crosby. JT, the junior, had the double in the right field gap in game two. See if he can find a hit here. Sean Adams ready. The wind, the pitch. High ball one. On deck. Designated hitter, Griffin Boykin. One ball and no strikes. Again, two big runners in scoring position. The pitch. Outside, ball two to J.T. Crosby. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. Wayne, three. Buford, two. The wind and the 2-0 pitch. High, ball three. Three and 3-0 to J.T. Crosby. Three balls, no strikes, two outs. The 3-0 pitch. In for a strike, three and one. Three balls, one strike, two outs. The 3 1 pitch. Swung on and fouled out of play. Three and two. Three two to JT. Junior third baseman for Wayne County. Again, Josh Gordon at James Marlin at third. And the pitch is down low, ball four bases low. JT Crosby draws a walk. Fourth walk in the game by Sean Adams. And that brings up Griffin Boykin. Wayne County sophomore Griffin Boykin bats with bases loaded two outs here in the top of the third. A chance to get some runs with a base hit. David Mosley on deck. Again, Adams struck out Griffin and David back in the second inning. There's only two strikeouts, or I'm sorry, he's got three strikeouts as he got Cooper Martin just this inning. So three strikeouts for Adams, four walks. Griffin with a big day yesterday with several hits. Chance to get one here and drive in some runs. 3-2 game, top of the third. Adams ready, and the pitch. And it's in for a strike. No balls, one strike. No balls, one strike, two outs. 3-2 game, Wayne County's favorite. The 0-1 pitch. Down low in the dirt, ball one, one and one. One ball, one strike, two odds. Griffin Boykin, sophomore, DH. Has a home run on the season. A one-one pitch. Outside, ball two, two and one. Two balls, one strike, two outs. Runners lead at every base, three ducks on the pond. The 2 1. Low ball three, three and one to Griffin Boykin. Three balls, one strike, two outs. Three ducks on a pond. Can we get one home here? The 3 1 pitch. Fly ball, high and deep to left. Going, going. This one is going. It's a grand slam home run. Oh, how sweet it is. Griffin Boykin goes young in the grand salami in the state playoffs. Oh, how sweet it is for Griffin Boykin, his second of the year. A grand slam home run, and Wayne leads it 7-2. to two. Oh, how sweet it is at Howard Bow Warren Field. The sophomore, Griffin Boykin, goes high and deep to left, and it hits a grand slam home run. And Wayne leads it 7-2 to two at Howard Bow Warren Field, and the crowd is on its feet here at Wayne County's Howard Bow. And here comes the coach of the mind, and I believe it's all for Sean Adams. Griffin Boykin hits it out of here. High and deep to left. Kisses it goodbye. And Wayne leads 7-2. Sonic call to the pin. 
Tell you the new pictures when we come back. It's Wayne, seven. Buford, two. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. It's time for the Sonic Call to the Bullpen, brought to you by your Sonic Drive-In on First Street in Jessup. Is Sonic good? Sonic of Jessup. At 919 First Street, wants to wish the Yellow Jacket baseball team the best of luck on their march to the state championship. Come by Sonic after the game, and for the next two hours, we will give you a free drink with any purchase. Sonic on First Street wants to wish the Yellow Jackets the best of luck on their winning season, so come by, visit our new dining room that will be opening up after March 1st. Remember, it's Sonic Good. Bridges and Bows Boutique would like to welcome you to our new establishment at 191 West Cherry Street, next door to the Berry Patch. Our unique boutique caters to all your shopping desires, through infants, littles, tweens, teens, and adults. We have more than just fashion. Come into Bridges and Bows Boutique and check out our exclusive lines of hair care, skin care, and so much more. We are open Monday through Friday, 1 until 6, and Saturdays 10 until 4. We look forward to offering you a new shopping experience in Wayne County. Bridges and Bows Boutique, 191 West Cherry Street, loves Wayne County sports. Go Jackets! What brings you and Greg to marriage counseling today? Jake from State Farm. My husband calls him all the time. Two, three in the morning, it doesn't matter. Greg, is this true? Yeah, Jake saves us tons on our insurance. No matter what time it is. And how much did he save you? Hundreds. Um, can I call this Jake from State Farm? You've got to be kidding me. State Farm is there for you anytime, anywhere. Just call or click today. Get to a better state. State Farm. Contact State Farm agent David Earl Keith at 427-2019. This is Wayne County Baseball on WIFO FM Jessup. David Mosley bats here. A six run third for Wayne County. We go from 2 1 down to 7 2 up and still batting. David Mosley at the plate against a new pitcher, senior Robbie Proud, right handed pitcher. Here's the wind of 1 0 to David Mosley. Swung on and fouled back. 1 1. David Mosley, the ninth man to bat in the inning. One ball, one strike, two outs, 7-2 game. Wayne County leads it here in the top of the third. Again, the visiting team in this third and final game. Pitches up high, ball two, two and one. And Wayne's getting deep in this pitching rotation for Buford. Man, I don't know how many pitchers they got left. Looking at the roster, they got a pile of them, but they've used just about everybody. Two balls, one strike, 2-1 to David Mosley. Down low, ball three, three and one. Mason. And Robertson on deck. We could bat around here if Mosley gets aboard. What a moment for Griffin Boyd and a sophomore. Grand slam home run in the state playoffs. Game three. There's a line drive off the pitcher's glove. Second baseman coming hurry, and he got the play. It was 1 4 3 to end the inning. But what an inning it is for Wayne County. The grand slam home run. Wayne scores six runs on one, two, three hits. A key error, and nobody left on base. Head to the bottom of third. It's a new score. Wayne County 7, Buford 2. Sheffield's Chosen Sports Shop is ready for the season. If you're looking for your favorite team's apparel, Sheffield's is the place to be. Sheffield's is your Under Armour location, has specials on shirts and shoes. Sheffield's has your bats, balls, helmets, score, anything your team needs. Sheffield's has you covered and is ready to outfit you and your entire team. Sheffield's also helps you after the season with trophies and flash of the year, end of the party, or banquet. Sheffield's Chosen Sports Shop serving Wayne and surrounding counties for years. Whatever the sport, whatever the season, Sheffield's has you covered. Stop by or call at 427-2982. Sheffield's Chosen Sports Shop, a true winner when it comes to sporting goods. When you become a customer at Prime South Bank, you'll become part of a team that has your back and is with you every step of the way in achieving your financial goals. Our doors open in 1891. 125 years later, we are still going strong. Prime South is constantly bringing innovative and convenient banking solutions to our growing communities. And our customers, well, they are the real MVPs. In the bank or on the field, Prime South's game face is always on for you. Prime South Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Kim Boykin of Boykin Steel and Crane wish the Yellow Jackets the best of luck this season, and Boykin Steel and Crane's legacy will make your foundation stronger as they specialize in steel fabrication, industrial maintenance, steel erection, crane rentals, and concrete. Boykin Steel and Crane in operation in Justin Wayne County since 1972. Jim Boykin has taken over the family business and continues to do what's best for his community. Boykin Steel and Crane located on Miss Vanna Highway in Jessup. The number to call is 427-7751. Boykin Steel and Crane, again, wishing the Yellow Jackets the best of luck. Wayne County Baseball, brought to you by the Altamaha Federal Credit Union and Bridges and Bows Boutique. We head to the bottom of the third inning, 2-3-4 and four to face four times in Garrison Christ, Noah Ledford and Reese McIntyre. 
Ford's pitch inside, ball one. Price reached on that air back in the first inning, getting a ground ball to Ford. He tried to pick it up and kicked it instead, and it runner reached. There's a ground ball hit the third and by third baseman J.T. Crosby in the left field. Solid base hit for Garrison Price here to start the third for Buford. And so much baseball still to play here. Only the third in the bottom half. Here's Noah Ledford who flied out the left back in the first inning. Wayne County, a six-run third on a grand slam home run by a sophomore Griffin Boykin. Again, Josh reached on a walk, four to two base air. James Mullen infield hit. Cade Lambert double in the corner. Cooper struck out. JT walked, and Griffin hits a grand slam home run. Pitches on the corner, strike one to Noah Ledford. And Cade Lambert's big RBI double, big hit in that inning as well. No balls, one strike. Runner on first. Nobody out here in the bottom of third. Scoreboard says two outs, no outs in the inning. Stretching the pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. 0 and 2 to Noah Lifford. Wayne County, seven. Buford, two. Bottom of the third. Four times and stares in, has the sign. The 0 2 pitch. It's breaking pitch, popped him up. Should be playable. Mason chasing it. I guess it's out of play. I'm sorry, it's out of play. Count stays 0 and 2. Wind blew it out of the stadium. No balls, two strikes. Runner first, nobody out. Bottom of the third in a 7 2 game in favor of Wayne County. Four times and on the line for Wayne County, the 0 2 pitch. Breaking pitch. Did he go? They say he did not go. Still one ball and two strikes. Reese McIntyre, the DH on deck. One ball, two strikes. To Noah Lifford. Four times and ready. The one-two pitch. Strike three call. Lifford's out. on strikes. Third strike on the game for four times and brings up the DH, Reese McIntyre. At number 29, designated hitter, Reese McIntyre. Wayne County, seven. Buford, two. Pitch to McIntyre, down low outside, ball one. McIntyre struck out back in the first. One ball and no strikes, one out. The 1-0 pitch. Inside and low, ball two, 2-0. Two balls, no strikes, one out. The 2-0 pitch. In for a strike, 2-1. Two, two balls, one strike, one out. The 2 1 pitch. Inside, ball three. Three and one. Three balls, one strike to Reese McIntyre. One down in the inning. The 3 1 pitch. And he lost in ball four. Two on, one out. Second and walk given up by four towns. Number 24, catcher Nathan Haynes. Brings up the catcher Nathan Haynes. He walked and scored back in the second inning. And Coach Barrett Brown is going to go out and talk to four times here in the third inning, try to settle him down. Again, realize he has a five run lead here. He's got to throw strikes. Look at the defense play behind you. No sense getting real fine. Just throw some strikes here. So Barrett talking to four times. And then Barrett on the pitching coaches for Wayne County, along with Coach Mullis. Again, Coach Mullis will be the first to tell you. Barrett Bryan pitched in the major league, so anytime he has some advice, he sits back and lets Barrett feed the advice. Here's Nathan Haynes, the catcher. 
Runners lead first and second, one down, bottom of the third, Wayne seven, Buford two. But again, they're the home team, and they bat here in the bottom half of the third. Ford's pitch down low, bounces away from David Mose. The runners move up to second and third. And Jackets need outs. Need strikes by four times. One ball, no strikes. Got to throw strikes here with that 7-2 lead. And nothing fancy, just throw the ball and throw strikes. One ball, no strikes, one out, two on, second and third, one down. Ford's pitch. Called ball two, two and oh. Two balls, no strikes, one out. Four times in the 2-0 pitch. Popped up, out of play. Two and one. Two balls, one strike, one out. Bottom of the third in a 7-2 game. We'll have to strand those two base runners here in this inning. Four times and pitching to the catcher, Nathan Haynes, a 2-1 pitch. Called ball three. Three balls, one strike, first base is open. Akira Mitchell on deck. Three balls, one strike. Ford waits on the sign. Now it takes too much time, they step out. Three balls, one strike, one out. Ford times and stares in. The 3 1 pitch. Nope, he's going to step off and reset. Three balls, one strike, one out. The 3 1 pitch. Fly ball, foul out of play. It's 3 2. Full count. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Wayne, seven, Buford, two. Buford threatening for runs here in the bottom of the third. Two on, one out, both in scoring position. Four Townsend's 3-2 pitch. Popped up again, fouling out of play. It remains full to Nathan Haynes. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Wayne, seven, Buford, two, bottom of the third inning. A 3-2 pitch. Lost in ball four. The bases are loaded. Back-to-back walks here in the third by four towns. And brings up the Kerry Mitchell had a double back in the second inning. And get a runner again at first base for the catcher. And K.J. Johnson, who came home to score in that double by Mitchell in the corner. Mitchell. Again, Wayne County needs outs here, needs strikes by four towns. These three passes is what killed us yesterday in that first game. The stretch and the pitch in for a strike, no balls, one strike. How about a double play ball here to get out of this inning and still lead 7-2, hit it to the fourth. No balls, one strike, one out, bases loaded. The 0-1 pitch. Instead of bluff throw to second, runners back. No balls, one strike, one out. Bases loaded. Buford batting, bottom of the third. They're the home team in this game. The 0-1 pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike two, 0-2. Strike Strikeout would be huge here. No balls, two strikes. Ahead in the count now to Akira Mitchell. One down in the inning. No balls, two strikes, one out. The 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, he struck him out, there's nowhere for him to go. All he's got to do is step on the plate, and the out is recorded. Two outs in the inning. Big strikeout for four times, strikeout number four. And here's Griffin Price, second baseman, flat out to right field back in the second on that nice running catch by Cade Lambert. Price. That was a big strikeout by four times, but again, the key was he got a hit in the count 0-2. Again, got to throw strikes in this ball game. And no one knows it better than the man on the mound, four times. 
Leads 7-2. Can lead 7-2 if he can get out three here in the third. And head to the fourth and look for more runs. Top of the order coming up. The pitch. Down low. Bounces away but not far. Mosley able to keep it in reach. One ball, no strikes to Griffin Price. Again, just a routine fly ball out, pop up, strike out, anything. Get out of this bases loaded jam and go to the fourth, up 7-2. Ford stares in to David Mosley, the stretch, the 1-0 pitch. High, ball two, 2-0. Again, got to throw strikes here in this situation. Can ill afford a bases loaded walk. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. The 2-0 pitch. Low, ball three, three and oh. Three balls, no strikes, two outs. A walk's a run for Buford. Three balls, no strikes, the 3-0 pitch. And instead he steps off in a real reset. Three balls, no strikes, two outs. Ford stares in the 3-0 pitch. And he lost in ball four to 7-3 game. Three walks in the inning. Four walks in the game. A run in on a bases loaded walk. And brings up shortstop Grant James. So the lead is at four. Time run at home plate and shortstop Grant James. And here comes Coach McDonald to the mound here. And we'll see what the decision is. Again, 7-3 game. And it looks like they already made the decision as Gans Starlin is ready to run on to the mound here. So you got a break in the action. Your score will call to the pen. Wayne, 7. You for 3. Gans Starlin comes to the mound. We'll be back after the pitching change. Don't you come back. Time for the Sonic Call to the Bullpen, brought to you by your Sonic Drive-In on First Street in Jessup. It's Sonic good. Sonic and Jessup at 919 First Street wants to wish the Yellow Jacket baseball team the best of luck on their march to the state championship. Come by Sonic after the game, and for the next two hours, we will give you a free drink with any purchase. Sonic on First Street wants to wish the Yellow Jackets the best of luck in their winning season. So come by, visit our new dining room that will be opening up after March 1st. Remember, it's Sonic Good. Damon's Restaurant is open seven days a week and offers daily specials and has a wide variety of menu items from salads to wings to burgers and fries. And check out their famous turkey burger. Damon's is famous for their variety of sauces, mild, wild, insane, or inferno. And when it comes to party platters, Damon's can make your party special. Simply call on the order ahead of time by calling 588-WING, 588-9464. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings continues to please its customers. And if you're looking for a great meal any day of the week, stop by and enjoy Damon's. You can stop in or use the drive through at the location 336 West Cherry Street. That's Damon's Restaurant, a Wayne County favorite. Wayne County Baseball brought to you by Hurricanes Convenience Store, Sheriff John Carter, and Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings. New pitcher Gant starting in for Wayne County, going to face Grant James. Again, announcement here from the, this is the student council. says tonight they're designer bag bingo with the high school commentary. The doors open at 6. If you're headed towards the building, you can purchase a ticket in the concession stand for $30. at you can purchase one at the door tonight. And Mother's Day is right around the corner. And again, they're asking you please come for this event. Again, designer bag night by the student council, the biggest fundraiser of the year. That's tonight at the Commons area at the high school at 6 p.m. Gans Starling, your new pitcher for Wayne County. Again, going to face the shortstop, Grant James, who bounced out to the pitcher four times. Ford stays in the game, he goes to first base. James Marlin stays in the game, he goes to left field. Or right field. I think James Marlin's in right field, and Josh stays in left field. So. Thomas stays in the center field. So Cade Lambert's eye, is that right? Cade Lambert's in center. Okay, so Cade Lambert stays in the game at center. Here's the stretch in the pitch, and it's down low ball one. One and oh. Again, there's no place to put James again. Wayne kind has got to throw strikes here. It's 7 3. You got a full run cushion, need an out. Again, got to stop the bleeding here. Got to throw strikes. The 1 0 pitch. That's in for a strike. 1 and 1. That's what we need right there. Two more of those and get out of this bases loaded jam and lead it by four going to the fourth. 7-3 game, bases loaded, tying run of the plate. The 1-1 pitch. Line, left field, and it's going to drop in for a base hit. 
They're going to score a run. They're going to hold the runners there. And now we throw it away. Runner coming home, and they're going to score two runs as we threw it away. Makes it a 7-5 game. Tying run at second base. A base at the left, and then a throwing at it by the left fielder. And it's a 7-5 game. And so Buford right back in it. Here's Christian Griffin. Runners lead second and third. 7-5, Wayne County, bottom of third. Griffin with a base hit his first time up. Gant with a stretch in the pitch. Inside ball one. One and oh. One ball, no strikes, two outs. 7-5 ball game. The stretch in the pitch. In for a strike, one and one. Again, the 7-2 lead is down to 7-5. Three runs in for Buford here in the third. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Down low, ball two, two and one. Austin Turner's on deck, and we don't want to see him bat in this third inning. I promise you that. Two balls, one strike, two outs. The 2-1 two, pitch. In for strike two, two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Sophomore Dan starting on the mound in relief for four times and here in the third inning. The 2-2 two, two pitch. Swung on and foul back. Stays 2-2. Two, two. And the time runs are at second and third. Again, they had a 2-1 lead. We went up 7-2. Now it's 7-5, and they're trying to tie with the base hit. Two balls, two strikes, two eyes. The 2-2 two, two pitch. Chess missed outside, ball three, three and two. First base is open, but again, the dangerous Austin Turner's on deck. Last time he faced Gans on the bases loaded was yesterday, and he ripped a tr- triple in the gap. The three-two pitch. He walked in, ball four, Turner's going to bat. Another walk in the inning. Five walks given up by Wayne County pitching. Here's Turner with the bases loaded, two outs. Again, last time, ripped it into the gap for the triple in game one. Has a chance to help them get the lead here in game two. 7-5, Gant started on the mound in relief. A single and a walk since coming in. The stretch, the pitch. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. Garrison Price on deck. One ball, no strikes, two odds. The 1 0 pitch. Round ball hit to short. Mason's got it. Flips the second inning over. Jackets get out of it with the lead, but Buford does some damage. Buford scores three runs in the third on one, two hits. One key error and three men left. We go to the fourth, top half. Wayne, seven. Buford, five. Communication is the key when it comes to business, especially your financial business. That's why Altamaha Federal Credit Union makes communication a priority, making banking easier for you. AFCU has money to lend, and it's easy to apply online or with a quick phone call. Your local credit union with open lines of communication. Altamaha Federal Credit Union. Jessup, Scriven, and Ludowisi. Visit Altamaha.org. Equal housing lender, federally insured by NCUA. Wayne Memorial Hospital wishes our Yellow Jacket baseball team the best of luck this season. We appreciate all of your hard work and dedication. And just like our student athletes, we strive to be the best. Teamwork is the hallmark of any successful organization. And at Wayne Memorial Hospital, teamwork is our middle name. At Wayne Memorial Hospital, we work together to make you feel like an all-star. Wayne Memorial Hospital, the official health care provider of the Yellow Jackets. Hello, Sybil's Family Restaurant. Is my daddy there yet? I'm not sure. Did your dad say he was coming to Sybil's Family Restaurant? That's where he said he was going. He's going to buy a gift for me to give my mom. Well, you've got one smart dad. Bringing your mom here for Mother's Day would be a great gift for her. Your family will enjoy a great home-cooked meal and a family atmosphere with great quality. And it's all affordable, too. What's affordable mean? Well, you can feed the entire family at Sybil's Family Restaurant at an affordable price. But what's affordable, mister? Well, son, how much did you have to spend? Two dollars and fifty-two cents and two bottle caps. Well, I'm sure we can help your family. Sybil's Family Restaurant is a great place to visit for Mother's Day. Okay, but give them change. Of course. And make sure he brings it back to me. 
Okay. Thank you so affordable. We've got something for everyone at Sybil's Family Restaurant, close to the intersection of 341 and Highway 84 in Jessup. Wayne County Baseball brought to you by your Jessup Piggly Wiggly, Republic Services, and David Earl Keith, your State Farm Insurance Agent. Mason Robertson leads off the fourth. 0-2 count to him. Robbie Proud, the senior pitcher on here for Buford. No ball with two strikes to Mason. The 0-2 pitch. Fly ball, high and deep, but foul and out of play. And Mason hits two that way. Foul out of play. Wayne County needs more runs, more base runners here. Top of the fourth again with a visiting team. We lead at 7-5. Led 7-2 a while ago. The 0-2 pitch. There's a line drive. Left center field. No one's getting out. No one's going to the wall. Extra bases for Mason Robertson. Mason's on his way to second. He'll hold with a stand-up double to start the fourth. Now they throw it away, but Mason will stay at second base. Mason with another extra base hit in the series. Rips a double to start the fourth for Wayne. Good start for the Yellow Jackets. Again, we just got to keep on pounding, keep on scoring runs. Number nine, Joshua Gordon. Smiley must be a fortune teller. He says it's going to be a high-scoring game. This might be a 15-13 final the way it's going. Here's Joshua Gordon. Again, that's where the pitching rules really play a factor. JT's done. Joshua Gordon's done. All their pitchers are pitched yesterday done. So, again, you got to see what's left here to finish out game three of this all-important series. Here's Joshua Gordon. Scored twice. Reached on an error. Walked. Scored two runs. The pitch. He's showing bunt, pitches up high, ball one, one and oh. Again, Wayne County leads at 7-5. We're in the top of the fourth game, sketch for seven. We're the visiting team at home in game three. Infield now in, looking for a bunt here against Josh Gordon. Josh with the big three-run home run in game one yesterday. The pitch. And it's in. Boykin Grand Slam, the total $1,050 now for Fairhaven from Wayne Memorial Hospital. One ball, one strike. Seven five game, but Mason's a second base, nobody out. Again, Josh showing bunt and the pitcher steps off the rubber, Robbie Proud, and will reset. Four times and still in the game on deck. It's a seven five ball game in favor of Wayne County. Wayne batting top of the fourth, lead off double by Mason Robertson. And Mason's back. Uh, the shortstop wants to talk to his pitcher, Robbie Proud. Again, Wayne County 7, Buford 5, top of the fourth inning here in game three of the series. Pitcher Robbie Proud. The stretch in the 1-1 pitch. And Josh does bunt. Bunts down the third base line. Pitcher turns and throws in time. And there's one away, but Mason's at third base. So a sacrifice bunt, perfect by Josh Gordon. And here's Four Townsend. Jack is trying to get one of those runs back that they scored in the bottom half. Hey, number 20, number 20, number 20, number 20. Again, just a two-run cushion at the moment. Can make it a three-run cushion if Mason scores here. One out for Four Townsend. Base hit and reached on an error. Been on base twice. Infield drawn in. The pitch to four. In for a strike. No balls, one strike. James Marvin on deck. No balls, one strike, one out, runner at third base, the pitch, and it's down low, ball one, one and one, four times. One ball, one strike, one out. Line scores seven runs, five hits for Wayne, five runs, four hits for Buford. A one-one pitch, a power, ball two, two and one. Two balls, one strike, one out. 7-5 game, Wayne County. Mason the third with 2-1. Swung on and foul back, 2-2. Two, two. two balls, two strikes, one out. Four times I'm trying to pick up a big RBI here, get one of those runs back. The stretch in the 2-2 two, two pitch. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. Big strikeout in the game. Ford goes down swinging. Brings up James Marlin. Had to base it up the middle his last time up. Again, that's a big run at third base. They're with one down. Now they were two down. Jack has need that RBI. See if James Marlin can pick it up here. 
Here's the stretch and the pitch to James. Popped up. Infield. Anybody find it? Nope, they can't find the ball. Catcher never saw it. Pitcher must have never saw it either. Luckily, it falls to the ground. No balls, one strike. That could have been out number three. Ball was in play right here behind home plate. James Marlin has new life. No balls, one strike, two outs. Again, that's a key run at third base here in this part of the ball game. Top of the fourth, 7 5. 8 5 sounds so much better. Time calls. James Marlin steps out. Again, a leadoff double, sacrifice bunt, then a strikeout. The 0 1 pitch. Up high, ball one, one and one. Cage Lambert on deck for Wayne County. Stayed in the game now in center field. One ball, one strike, two outs. The one one pitch. Hit him. A hit batter. James Marvin goes to first base. And here's Cage Lambert had the big double back in the third coming to the plate. Betting number four, Senator Cade Lambert. 7-5 game. Wayne County leads at top of the fourth. Game scheduled for seven. And we're glad you're with us here on Big Dog Country. FM 105.5 and the World Wide Web. All-important third game of the series. Wayne, the visiting team, lost the coin toss yesterday. Got runners at first and third with two odds for Cade Lambert, Jr., now playing center field for Wayne County. See if he can pick up a big hit. Popped him up down the right field line. Second baseman says he's got to play, and he does, and the inning comes to an end. So Wayne County strands the base runner third in the fourth. In the inning, no runs. One hit, no errors, two men left. We go to the bottom of the fourth, clinging to a 7-5 lead, Wayne County. Richards and Bowes Boutique would like to welcome you to our new establishment at 191 West Cherry Street, next door to the Berry Patch. Our unique boutique caters to all your shopping desires, through infants, littles, tweens, teens, and adults. We have more than just fashion. Come into Bridges and Bowes Boutique and check out our exclusive lines of hair care, skin care, and so much more. We are open Monday through Friday, 1 until 6, and Saturdays 10 until 4. We look forward to offering you a new shopping experience in Wayne County. Bridges and Bowes Boutique, 191 West Cherry Street, loves Wayne County sports. Go Jackets! Stop creditor harassment today. Stop the worry of a pending repossession, garnishment, or foreclosure. Contact the bankruptcy group, attorney R. Flake Cavanis, for an experienced assessment of your financial situation. They have locations in Brunswick, Hazelhurst, and now Jessup. They are a debt relief agency. They help people file for bankruptcy relief. Contact legal assistant Tanya Blanton at 912-375-5620. 375-5620 to set up your free consultation. Let the bankruptcy group do the worrying for you. Now serving Jessup. Does your car or truck need a paint job, body repair, or even a tow? Call the experts at Lightsey's Body Shop, family-owned and operated since 1978, where the courteous, knowledgeable, and professional staff will meet all your needs at Lightsey's Body Shop, where everybody is somebody. Call us today. Let us take the stress away. We are located at 1526 Rainier Road, just past the dollar store. Give us a call at 385-6193. That's 385-6193. Lightsey's Body Shop. Wayne County Baseball brought to you by Wayne Memorial Hospital, Grant Lewis Towing, and the Bankruptcy Group. Pearson Price leads it off. Two balls, no strikes to him. Two good-looking breaking pitches, but the umpire called both the ball. The 2-0 pitch, and he calls that ball 3-3-0. and Again, walks just piling up for Wayne County pitching, and it's really coming back to bite here in this ball game. 3-0 pitch, ball four, leadoff man on. Leadoff walk starts at the bottom of the fourth. And that's six walks going up by Wayne County pitching in this ball game. Here is Noah Ledford, first baseman, 0 for 2, fly out, struck out. Yeah, and the first two pitches, awfully good by, again, starting on the both called balls by the man in blue behind the plate. So a leadoff walk, tying run to the plate here in the bottom of the fourth in a 7 5 game. Buford again, the home team here in game three. Again, with the stretch and the pitch. And that ball was hit in the air, well hit, left center field, and we're looking up and it's gone. We're tied up 7-7. Noah Ledford with a two-run bomb, and it's 7-7 here in the bottom of the fourth. It's a brand-new game. Got to start over, folks. The 7-2 lead is gone. As Ledford goes yard, and we're tied 7-7. So 
it's a brand new game from this point forward. Wayne seven, Buford seven, nobody on, nobody out. Time to go to work, Wayne County. Here's the D.H. Reese McIntyre. Dan Starlin has to regroup here in the pitch. Breaking pitch in for a strike. No balls, one strike. 7-2 lead has vanished. It's 7-7. Bottom of the fourth, they're still batting with nobody out. There's the 0-1 pitch. Swinging a miss, strike two. 0-2. Again, a lot of baseball yet to be played. We're only in the fourth inning. It's a 7-7 game. Brand new game from this point forward. No balls, two strikes, the pitch. There's a one hopper to third. JT Crosby to first in time, one away. Brings up Nathan Haynes, the catcher. Batting number 24, catcher Nathan Haynes. So one down in the fourth. Again, they're the home team on that coin flip yesterday. 7-7 ball game, all tied up. 7-2 lead is gone, just like that in a blink of an eye. And the sad thing is it was mainly on walks. Take away the walks, we're still up 7-4. But all those walks come to score. The other one pitch, swung on and foul back, 0-2. Again, sophomore Dan Starlin and Wayne County just have to regroup here. Brand new game. Nobody on, one out. The 0-2 pitch, and there's a ground ball, base hit left field. Haynes is on at first base with one down. And it brings up Akira Mitchell, the third baseman. Strike out victim in the third, doubled in the second. 7-2 lead is gone, folks. 7-7 in the fourth. A lot of baseball yet to be played. And Wayne County's got to get outs, throw strikes, hit the ball, and win this ball game somehow, some way here at home if their season is to continue. Throw the first runners back in time. Gantz, Darwin, sophomore, and a closer most of the year, now in the middle part of this ball game. The stretch and the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike one. No balls, one strike. You know, look at this roster. Still got Bryce Miller, possibility on the mound. Still got Jasper Deverly, possibility on the mound. Again, Ford's done. JT Crosby's done. Josh Gordon done. So, again, those are your options at the moment. Jasper and Bryce Miller. Get one pitch. Runners going. Swing and a miss. Strike two. 0-2. Oh, two. But a stolen base for Haynes. Just not sure how many more pitches Gans got. Pitched yesterday some. Pitching here today, and we're only in the fourth. So, again, it's going to be interesting where we go next, where Buford goes next. It's a brand-new game, 7-7, trying to hang on to the tie here in the bottom of the fourth. they got a runner at second and one out. 0-2 count to Mitchell. Gant ready to stretch. And, again, a bluff throw to second, but the runner's back in time. No balls, two strikes, one out. The 0-2 pitch, a high ball one, one and two. So we got a brand new game here in the middle of the fourth. Seven seven, runner at second, one down. Buford, the home team, batting in the bottom of the fourth inning. Come all the way back, they score three in the third, two in the fourth to tie it. Seven seven and have the go-ahead run at second base with one eye. The one-two pitch, there's a ground ball to short. Mason's got it, throws the first in time, holds the runner at second base, there's two down. Another nice play by our senior shortstop, two down in the fourth. Here's Griffin Price, the second baseman. Walks back in the third, fly out to right in the second. Yeah, defensively now for Wayne County is J.T. Crosby at third, Mason at short, Cooper at second, four times in at first, David Mose the catch. Got James Marvin in the right, Cade Lambert in center, and Josh Gordon in the left. There's a fly ball, short right field, second baseman Cooper Martin out, makes the catch. Inning comes to the end. In the inning, though, they tie it. Two runs, two hits, big home run in the inning. 
the Raiders, one man left. Brand new game as we go to the fifth. Three frames left. Wayne, seven. Buford, seven. Is your checking account broke? These days, every little bit helps. So if you can eliminate monthly checking charges, why wouldn't you? An Interstate Credit Union will help you afford everyday living with our low to no cost products and services. Call 800-822-1124 or go online at iufcu.org to find out how to make checking work for you at Interstate Credit Union. Branches in Jessup, Baxley, Midway, and Hazelhurst. Federally insured by NCUA. Stop by Southside Automotive for major and minor mechanical repairs. Diagnostic testing, tune-ups, oil changes, brakes. Southside Automotive is the place for quality repairs and prompt service. Make sure your AC is working its best for this hot summer. Joey says stop by today, we'll take care of you. If you want the best in automotive services, stop by Southside Automotive on 301 South in Chesham. Call 427-9653. That's 427-9653. Southside Automotive. This is your sheriff, John Carter. Wishing the best for the Jackets this baseball season. Just as hard work, commitment, and experience are the keys to reaching your goals on the field, they are also the keys to the successful operation of your sheriff's office. Go get them, Jackets, all season long. This is your sheriff, John Carter, proudly serving our community. Wayne County Baseball brought to you by Lighty's Body Shop, Hinesville Home Center, and the Interstate Credit Union. Top of the fifth, Cooper Martin's going to lay down a bunt, and it is going to be safe at first base. Cooper beats it out. Infield bunt by Cooper Martin. Bang, bang, play, but he beats it out here to start the top of the fifth inning. Infield hit for Cooper Martin to start the fifth. Here's J.T. Crosby. Tom called as the coach is going to come out and argue the call here. That's his buddy behind home plate, so hold on to your hat here on a first-name basis. Please tell me he's not going to change the call here. He wants him to. He's pleading his case. And Cooper Martin safe at first base, first base umpire, an inch away from the play, home plate umpire behind the plate, not going to change the call. Conversation comes to an end. Here's JT Crosby. JT's bounced out and walked and scored. 7 7, brand new game. Wayne with the leadoff man on here at the top of the fifth. Had a 7 2 lead moments ago, but it's a brand new ball game with three frames left. See if we can rally here, get a big inning. JT Crosby the plate. Pitch to him. He squares the bunt, pulls back. It's in for a strike. No ball is one strike. Again, a senior pitcher on the mound now for Buford, Robbie Proud. Senior right-hander. No balls, one strike to J.T. Crosby. A pod ball one, one and one. One ball, one strike. What a series it's been. Every game just on the edge of your seat, and people get their money's worth in this one. One ball, one strike, a one-one pitch. Line, right field, base hit down in the corner. Cooper's on his way to third. He'll reach easily. J.T.'s going to hold with a long single, but we got runners at the corners first and third. J.T. Crosby delivers a base hit down the right field line. And Wayne's in business here in the fifth with runners at the corners, nobody out. Griffin Boykin, Grand Salami, his last time up, steps up again. Time called as the coach from Buford's on the way to the mine. They have another pitching change. We'll wait and see. Could be a call to the pin. And this pitching thing is really getting interesting for both teams. Is that it? It is. We got a call to the bullpen. We'll tell you the new pitchers when we come back. Break any action. Runners at the corner. There's nobody out. We'll be back with a new pitcher for Buford after the timeout. Don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. It's time for the Sonic Call to the Bullpen. Brought to you by your Sonic Drive-In on First Street in Jessup. Is Sonic good? Sonic of Jessup. At 919 First Street, wants to wish the Yellow Jacket baseball team the best of luck on their march to the state championship. Come by Sonic after the game, and for the next two hours, we will give you a free drink with any purchase. Sonic on First Street 
wants to wish the Yellow Jackets the best of luck in their winning season. So come by, visit our new dining room that will be opening up after March 1st. Remember, it's Sonic Good. At Broadhurst Landfill, keeping our community safe is the most important thing we do. Our local team of environmental managers, engineers, and scientists ensure that the long-term management of the landfill is safe for our workers, customers, and the environment. To learn more, visit our website at www.broadhurstlandfill.com. Or you can go to the website, click Visit Us, and sign up for a tour to see firsthand how we operate. We hope to see you soon. Wayne County Baseball brought to you by the Interstate Credit Union, Southside Automotive, and Sybil's Family Restaurant. You know, when Ledford is going to come to the mound, the first baseman, and Reese McIntyre, the DH, is going to go out and play first base. So, again, Ledford, a junior pitcher for Buford High School, six foot 240 on the mound here with the runners at the corners and nobody out to start the fifth for Wayne County. And Griffin Boykin had the grand slam home run back in the third when Wayne County went up 7-2. Comes to the plate here with runners at the corners and nobody out. Fifth inning action, game scheduled for seven. We've got a marathon underway here at Howard Bow. Again, back and forth we go. All kinds of runs, all kinds of pitchers. Pitching rules really play in havoc here with game three. In the old days, you'd bring back your ace and close it out. To bring back your number two pitcher for game three, but no longer with the pitching rules. you got to have a deep pitching staff, and we've seen a pile of pitchers from Buford and a pile from Wayne County. Cade Lambert's still available for Wayne County as well. He pitched yesterday, so I forgot about him. He's out in center field. So we'll see how it goes here in the fifth. Good start. Runners at the corners first and third. Big hit by J.T. Crosby. And here's Griffin Boykin again. A grand slam home run, a strikeout in the second but has had a good series here against Buford and had a good series against Jones County. Only a sophomore. Chance to give Wayne County the lead once again. Runners at first and third. Cooper Martin at third. JT Crosby at first. Ledford with the pitch, and it's in for a strike. No balls, one strike. Noah Ledford, tall right-hander for Buford High School. Griffin Boykin, sophomore, D.H., Ledford ready, the 0 1 pitch. Breaking pitch up high, ball one, one and one. David Mosley, the catcher on deck, and then the top order, Mason Robertson, had a double his last time up. One ball, one strike. A stretch and the 1 1 pitch. High, ball two, two and one. Two balls, one strike. Nobody out. Top of the fifth with a visiting team in game three. Two balls, one strike. The 2 1 pitch. High ball three, three and one from Ledford. And got to be patient here. See if Coach McDonald has Griffin taking one here. Try to load the bases up to get David Mosley to the plate. Three balls, one strike, nobody out. Runners at the corners, top of the fifth, tied 7-7. The pitch in for a strike, I think it was taken all the way. 3-2. Big payoff pitch here for Griffin Boykin. Three balls, two strikes, no outs. The 3-2 pitch, rounded foul, pass third. Payoff pitch. 3-2 to Griffin Boykin. Runners at the corners, nobody out. A brand new game in the fifth, tied 7-7. We're the visiting team at our own ballpark in game three, trying to take the lead here in this all-important game three. 3-2 three, to Griffin Boykin. And it's outside, ball four, bases loaded. Ledford walks the first man he faces and loads him up for David Mosley. David struck out and hit into a double play. I'm sorry, not a double play. It was a 1-4-3. Ricocheted off the pitcher's glove, went to second base. 1-4-3 on the put out. 0 for 2, David Mosley. Bats here with the bases loaded. Nobody out. Another sophomore in this lineup for Wayne County. Ledford with the pitch. High ball 1. 1-0. One ball, no strikes. Nobody out. 7-7 game in favor of Wayne County. I um, mean, Todd, 7-7. Wayne looking to take the lead. The one ball, no strikes to David Mosley. The 1-0 pitch. High ball, 2-0. Two, two 
Two balls, no strikes on deck. Mason Robertson. Time calls. The catcher wants to go out and talk to Ledford. Ledford was all excited about getting on that mound with the baseball, but so far hasn't been able to find that strike zone. Walk the first batter, 2-0 to David Mosley. Mason Robertson on deck. Chance for a big inning. Let's get that seven-run lead back, or that five-run lead back. 7-2 at one point, now 7-7. 12-7 would look better here in the fifth. (laughs) David Mosley at the plate. Again, getting the start at the plate here in this third game of the series. Ahead in the count, 2-0. Had a long talk with Coach McDonald. Two balls, no strikes. The 2-0 pitch. In for a strike, 2-1. Two balls, one strike to David Mosley. Sophomore catcher. The 2-1 pitch. Grounded to short. The cell, they bobble it. Throw to first. They throw wide. Everybody's safe. A run's coming home. The run cutter's going to take a two-run lead. 8-6. I'm sorry, 9-7. 9-7 your score. Two-run score. And Wayne leads 9-7. They try for the double play. They dropped it at second base. They throw wide at first. Going to get a runner for the catcher. And Wayne's back on top 9-7. Bases, first and second. And here's Mason Roberts. So Wayne back in front by two, nine, seven. What will this final score read at the end of seven? Nine, seven at the moment. Here's Mason, still nobody out, and Ledford has not gotten anybody out. Runners lead. They got Collage Hartsaw running the first base for catcher David Mosley. Griffin Boykin at second base. Stretching the pitch to Mason Robertson. Way up high, ball one. One and oh. One ball, no strikes. Nobody out. Two runs in here in the top of the fifth. Wayne nine, Buford seven. Noah Ledford ready, the 1 0 pitch. Breaking pitch in for a strike, one and one. One ball, one strike, nobody out. Top of the fifth, two runs in, two more runners on base for Wayne County. Joshua Gordon on deck and in for Townsend. Mason Robertson, the one one, down low, ball two, two and one. Two balls, one strike, nobody out. Senior shortstop Mason Robertson at the plate. Doubled his last time up. Walked in the first, ground out second and the third. The 2 1 pitch. Line but foul. Mason jumped all over that. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, Mason in that zone. You can just see it in his eyes. Everything's just coming up there, clear as a bell, and he's just ripping it. Two balls, two strikes to our leadoff batter, Mason Robertson. Had the big three-run home run in game two yesterday to help Wayne County win at game 5-1. Again, a 12-strikeout performance by Joshua Gordon on 10. Just a great pitching performance. Gave up only three hits. Two balls, two strikes to Mason. 9-7 lead for Wayne County. The stretch in the pitch to Mason. Mason, line drive, base hit. Left center field. Griffin getting the... Green light, here he comes, and Griffin's going to score, and Wayne County takes a 10-7 lead. RBI single for Mason and Robertson. Coach McDonald waves Griffin, and Griffin comes home to score. It's a three-run inning thus far for the Yellow Jackets. Runners are first and second, and nobody out. Mason, another base hit. Here's Joshua Gordon. Joshua Gordon reached on the fielders. Chorson scored, walked and scored, bounced out the pitcher in the fourth. Had a three-run bomb in game one yesterday. Wayne up by three, 10-7 lead here in the top of the fifth. Runners lead first and second, nobody out for Joshua Gordon. Noah Ledford ready, the stretch, the pitch, up high, ball one, one and oh. Four Townsend on deck. Wayne, 10, Buford, 7, three-run cushion in game three. Wind still blowing out from right to left. Runners lead first and second. The 1 0 pitch. And Josh squares the bunt, bunts foul. It's 1 and 1. 
One ball, one strike, nobody out. Three runs in. Infield bunt by Cooper. Base hit J.T. Crosby. Griffin walked. David Mosley reaches on an air. They threw it away. Then Mason with the base hit. The 1-1. One, one. Then Josh Squares bunt pulls back, and it's in for a strike, one and two. One ball, two strikes. Joshua Gordon at the plate for Wayne County. Three runs in, two more runners on base. 10-7, Yellow Jackets. The 1-2 pitch. Down low, ball two, two and two. And Ledford's not gotten anybody out since coming in. This is fifth batter faced. Two balls, two strikes. The stretch in the 2-2 two -two to Joshua Gordon. Josh with a foul ball down the right field line, out of play. And it stays 2-2 two -two to Joshua Gordon. Again, got the big win again in game two on the mound. A three-hit, 12-strikeout performance against Buford High School. The more you say it, the better it sounds. Three-hitter, 12 strikeouts against Buford High School. A 5-1 win. We won game two against Jones County, 5-1. Here it's 10-7. Two-two count with 2-2 two -two to Joshua Gordon. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. First out of the inning. One down for four towns. Four towns and steps to the plate. One down, two on. Ford on the day, a base hit the left RBI, reached on an error and struck out. The bats here with a chance to help the cause. A 10-7 lead, two on, one out. Against Noah Ledford. Here's the pitch to Ford. And there's down low ball one. One and oh. James Marvin on deck for Wayne County. One ball, no strikes, one out. And Noah Ledford, the pitcher. And it's up high, ball two, two and oh. Two balls, no strikes. Four times in batting here, and two balls, no strikes, one out. The stretch in the 2 0 pitch. In for a strike, two and one. Two balls, one strike, one out. Top of the fifth, game schedule for seven, 10 7, Wayne County, a three run inning thus far. The 2 1, down low, ball three, three and one. Three balls, one strike, one out. Four times and trying to keep the inning going here. James Marvin on deck, only one out, three runs in. Looking for more, take all we can get against this Buford High School baseball team. Three balls, one strike, one out. The 3 1 pitch. Ball four, bases loaded. Bases loaded once again for Wayne County. Three ducks on a pond. And here's James Mullen. James fly to the center, singled and got hit by a pitch. Set the ball hard. See if he can get us a big base hit here. Clean up batter. He's got a home run on the season. So that by Griffin Boyd can hit a grand slam. Trying for magic here. <laughs> Base is loaded. 10-7 game. The stretch. The pitch. Low ball one. One and oh. Cade Lambert on deck. Jack is trying to increase the lead. Lead by three. 10-7. Noah Ledford ready. The 1-0 pitch to James Modlin. Outside and high, ball two, two and oh. Again, we gave them a bases loaded walk a couple innings ago. Hopefully they can return the favor. Two balls, no strikes, one eye. Noah Ledford, the pitcher for Buford. James Marlin, the batter, the 2 0 -oh pitch. Swung on and foul back, 2 1. Two balls, one strike, one out. Bases loaded. Kalaja Hartsog down there at third base for Wayne County. 
Mason Robertson at second base, four times at first base. Three ducks on the pond. Let's bring them home. Two balls, one strike, one out. The 2 1 pitch. High ball three, three and one. The James Marvin. And hopefully they can return the favor. We'll give them bases loaded to walk back a few innings ago. We'll take one here for us. 3 1 pitch. Big pitch here by Noah Ledford and for Wayne County. Trying to make it 11 7 with a walk. The 3 1 pitch on the way. High. No, oh, he called it a strike. Three and two. He called it a strike two. Oh, unbelievable. Payoff pitches due to James Marlin. Three balls, two strikes, one out. The three two pitch. Popped up foul out of play. It stays full. 3 2 to James Marlin. One nothing Wayne County. 2 1 Buford. 7 2 Wayne. 7 7. And now 10 7 Wayne. Payoff pitch again due to James Marlin. Bases loaded, one down. Noah Ledford taking a deep breath. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Bases for the Wayne County Yellow Jackets. The 3 2 pitch on the way. High ball four. Walk is in. The run is in. It's 11 7 Wayne County. They do return the favor. And Wayne County gets that bases loaded RBI for James Marvin. And Wayne County goes up 11 to 7. Mason goes to third. Four to second. And James Marvin to first. And here comes the coach for Griffin. I'm sorry, for Buford. As again, Ledford's only got one person out in the whole inning. And I think they got another call to the pen. We do. Break any action, your score. Wayne, 11. Buford, 7. Back with a new pitcher after the timeout. Don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. It's time for the Sonic Call to the Bullpen. Brought to you by your Sonic Drive-In on First Street in Jessup. Is Sonic good? Sonic and Jessup. At 919 First Street, wants to wish the Yellow Jacket baseball team the best of luck on their march to the state championship. Come by Sonic after the game, and for the next two hours, we will give you a free drink with any purchase. Sonic on First Street wants to wish the Yellow Jackets the best of luck in their winning season, so come by, visit our new dining room that will be opening up after March 1st. Remember, it's Sonic Good. At Paul Thigpen Chevrolet, you never need to wait for a sale to see. Right, Paul? Heck no, boy. With our right here, right now attitudes and these huge PTC discounts and GM rebates on top, we're ready to do work to earn your business today. Don't forget about the best finance rates. Yeah, you right there, cuz. We got the best finance rates in South Georgia. Selection? We stack them deep and sell them cheap, cheap, cheap every day. Find new roads at Paul Thigpen Chevrolet in Vidalia. Hey y'all, this is Chelsea with Magic Mattress. I want to invite y'all to come check us out when you're in the market for your next mattress. At Magic Mattress, our lower overhead allows us to offer you lower prices on brands you know and trust. With our easy financing options, including 90 days same as cash, we can send you home tonight to rest great in your new bed. Magic Mattress is locally owned and family operated in downtown Jessup. Come down and see us at 109 West Cherry Street. Call us today at 912-256-REST. That's 912-256-7378. Wayne County Baseball, brought to you by Sheffield's Trophies and Sports Shop and Boyd Kenny Rectors. We are going to Cade Lambert here. New pitcher Cole Hunter comes back from yesterday. Junior right-hander, 6'2", 230. Faces Cade Lambert, the ninth man to bat in the inning. Still just one out. Base is loaded for Wayne County Yellow Jackets. Wayne up by 11-7. to We scored fourth thus far here in the fifth. Looking for more. Take all we can get. Here's Cade Lambert. Has a big double in his ball game. See if he can get another big hit. He's been hitting the ball well. Here's the pitch. And he hits a fly ball right center field. Well hit. No one's going to get that. It's up for extra bases. One run in. Here comes the second run to round third. He'll score. Runners at second and third. It's 13-7 Wayne County. Cade Lambert delivers a big two-run double. Continues to hit the ball well for Wayne County. And Wayne County's up 13-7 in the fifth. Still just one out. We batted around. Here comes Cooper Martin, who let it off with an infield bunt. 13-7. How about four more and three outs and get out of here? 13-7. Top of the fifth. Here's Cooper Martin. Runs 14 and 15 on the base path. Runs 16 at the plate. A 17th run on deck. 
and Griffin Boykin. I'm sorry, JT Crosby. Griffin after that. Two on, one out. Lambert with a double to right center. Here's a stretch in the pitch to Cooper Martin. In for a strike. No ball was one strike. Wayne County's batted around in the fifth. Cooper led off with the infield bunt, and it's led to a six run inning thus far. Still looking for more here. No balls, one strike, one out. The 0 1 pitch. Line, right center field again. Turner chasing it. He's not going to get it. It's over his head. All the way to the monster. Two runs in. Cooper's on his way to third with a triple. Oh, how sweet it is. Cooper Martin triple to the monster. And Wayne County's up 15 7. Hey, how sweet it is at Howard Bow one field. Wayne County exploding for eight runs in the fifth thus far. A triple to the monster over Turner's head and center. And you got to put a charge in the one to get over his head. And Cooper does just that. Cooper Martin triples in two, and Wayne County leads it 15-7. Run 16 at third. Run 17 at home plate. And J.T. Crosby still only one out, and Griffin Boykin on deck. There's the stretch and the pitch. And it's a ball. One ball, no strikes to J.T. Crosby. Had a big hit in this inning. A base hit to right field. One ball, no strikes. Wayne, 15. Buford, 7. The stretch, the pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one, one and one. Man, did Cooper put a charge in that ball? And Turner, one of the better center fielders. We saw him make a great circus catch yesterday. Could not get to that ball. Went all the way to the monster, 400 feet. The 1-1 one, one to JT. JT fouls it out of play, one and two. Wayne County, again, keep in mind the visitor team here in game three. This is on the top half of the fifth. It's 15-7. But two more runs and three out could close it out for Wayne County. One ball, two strikes, one out, the one-two pitch. Outside, ball two, two and two. Two balls, two strikes, one out. J.T. Crosby. At the plate for Wayne. Still just one down in the inning. Eight runs in. The 2-2 pitch. Fouled out of play. It remains 2-2. Two balls. Two strikes. One out. Wayne with a 16th run at third base with one down. The 2-2 to J.T. Crosby. Line fouled out of play. And it stays 2-2. Griffin Boykin on deck with a grand slam home run in the third for Wayne. We led 7-2 at that point, but Buford tied it 7-7 in the next two frames. But an eight-run fifth at the moment has us up 15-7. Here's the stretch and the pitch to J.T. Crosby. Way up high, ball three. Three and two to J.T. Three balls, two strikes, one out. The 3-2 pitch. Popped up, foul, and out of play. So, again, another foul ball by J.T. Crosby, who's had a good at bat here. Cooper Martin with a triple to center, a two-run triple, standing at third. What a hit by Cooper Martin. High and deep to center over Austin Turner's head, all the way to the 400 monster in center. Two runs in. Wayne's got eight runs in. Still batting. One out. J.T. Crosby at the plate. 3-2, 3-2, the 3-2 pitch. Down low, ball four, another ran on. That's a potential winning run here in this fifth inning. J.T. Crosby is the potential winning run in this ball game at first base with one out. And here's Griffin Boykin. Griffin got a walk in the inning. Has the grand slam, home run in the third, and a strikeout in the second. 15-7, Wayne over Buford here at Howard Bow Warren. The winner gets Carrollton next week. Again, if Wayne wins, they'll flip a coin to determine the location of that series. Runners first and third for Griffin Boykin. Infield drawn in again. Griffin swings and misses strike one. No balls, one strike. Again, only one eye. David Mosley on deck. Wayne, 15. Buford, 7. Top of the fifth. Eight runs in. Still batting. One out. And Griffin Boykin at the plate for Wayne County. A grand slam home run. That was a huge hit back in the third, but that lead vanished and vanished quickly. But a huge lead again for Wayne, an eight-run fifth. 
what a comeback. What a team that continues to battle and fight and fight and fight. No balls, one strike, one out. Runners at the corners. That runner is first, a potential winning run. Griffin hits a grounder foul, and it's no balls and two strikes to Griffin Boykin. J.T. Crosby at first base. Again, he's run 17. So a 10 runner rule after five. If he scores and Wayne goes three up, three down in the bottom of the fifth, we can get out of here with a five inning, 10 runner rule win. Here's the stretch of the 0 2 to Griffin up high. Runner going to second base, and they're going to let him go to second base. And it's 1 and 2 to Griffin Boykin now. The potential winning runs at second base with one out. And he can score in a base hit here. One ball, two strikes to Griffin Boykin. 15 7 to run 16 and 17 at second and third. One ball, two strikes. Carabeth Heisman needs to come on off it. The 1 2 pitch. Swung on and foul back. You talk about a good luck charm today. Care Beth Highsmith at the ball game. If this is the result, she needs to come every game. One ball, two strikes, one out. Wayne, 15. Buford, 7. One, two pitch to Griffin Boykin. Down low, 2-2. Two, two. two balls, two strikes. Just one out here in the top of the fifth. Eight runs in, looking for two more right there at second and third. The 2-2 to Griffin. Swung on and foul back. It stays 2-2. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Wayne, 15. Buford, 7. Lead it by 8. Two balls, two strikes, one out. The stretch in the 2-2 pitch. Fly ball, left field, could score a run. It could score two, it gets in. The wind took it. Crosby's going to score, and we lead it 17-7. to seven. The wind got a hold of that fly ball and took it away from the outfielders and took it up against the fence for a double, and Wayne leads 17-7. The wind helped that one, and Wayne is up by 10 runs here in the top of the fifth. And Wayne County right now looking at three outs away from a victory when we hit to the bottom of the inning. We're still batting here. And here comes the coach again from Buford. Another call to the bullpen. New pitcher when we come back. Ten runs in. Wayne 17. Buford 7. Back with the new pitcher after the call to the bullpen. Don't you come back no more, no more. It's time for the Sonic Call to the Bullpen, brought to you by your Sonic Drive-In on First Street in Jessup. Is Sonic good? Sonic of Jessup. At 919 First Street, wants to wish the Yellow Jacket baseball team the best of luck on their march to the state championship. Come by Sonic after the game, and for the next two hours, we will give you a free drink with any purchase. Sonic on First Street wants to wish the Yellow Jackets the best of luck in their winning season, so come by, visit our new dining room that will be opening up after March 1st. Remember, it's Sonic Good. When you become a customer at Prime South Bank, you become part of a team that has your back and is with you every step of the way in achieving your financial goals. Our doors opened in 1891. 125 years later, we are still going strong. Prime South is constantly bringing innovative and convenient banking solutions to our growing communities. And our customers, well, they are the real MVPs. In the bank or on the field, Prime South's game face is always on for you. Prime South Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Wayne County Baseball, brought to you by the Ultimaha Federal Credit Union and Bridges and Bowes Boutique. Wayne County leads at 17-7. A new pitcher in for Buford, number 21, Will Westmoreland. He's a junior, 5'10", 180. Wayne County's Griffin Boykin got a wind to double there. That ball looked like a routine out. The left fielder was camped under, and all of a sudden the wind got a hold of it and took it to the 340-foot fence, and J.T. Crosby scores and we're up by 10. 17-7, still batting, still just one out. Here's David Mosley with Mason and Robertson on deck, and Griffin Boyd getting a big insurance run out there on second base. Again, I'd like to pad this 10-run lead, and then if Griffin scores a couple runs, we can still win it in five. David Mosley at the plate. Here's the stretch and the pitch to David Mosley. David with the ground ball, second base. Second baseman throws the first in time, and on the third is Griffin Boykin. 
And here's Mason Robertson, who's had a day, a double, a single in this inning, a run scored in this inning, had the three-run bomb in game number two. Wayne County, 17. Buford, 7. Top of the fifth. Big run at third base. We can pick it up. Nice to have a run, one-run cushion and three outs. Here's the stretch in the pitch. It's down low. Ball one. One and oh. Wayne County, 17. Buford, 7. Ten-run lead for Wayne County here in the top of the fifth inning. A ten-run fifth inning after they came back and tied at 7-7. Seven, seven. Four strike. One and one to Mason Roberts. One ball. One strike. Two outs. Wayne, 17. Buford, 7. For 1-1 one, one pitch. In for strike two. One and two. One ball. Two strikes. Two outs. Two outs. 17-7, seven, Wayne County. The one-two pitch popped up. Foul territory. First baseman, catcher. Everybody chasing it. Anybody can get there. Did he make the catch? He did not. It falls to the ground. And he's still alive. Great effort by the first baseman, Ledford, but could not make the catch. 17-7. Ten-run cushion for Wayne here in game number three. Mason at the plate with the big insurance run down there at third base. Griffin Boykin. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Top of the fifth. Game scheduled for seven. But now the 10 run rule in effect at the moment. Swung on and foul back. And time call as the catcher comes up a little lane. Looked like it went off his shin, but he says he's okay. New ball for the pitcher. Coach out to check his catcher, Nathan Haynes. He's going to hang in there. Senior catcher. What an inning, folks. Again, 10 run inning here for Wayne County. It all began with an infield bunt by Cooper Martin. J.T. Cross with base hit to right. Griffin Boykin hit by a pitch. I'm sorry, Griffin Boykin walk. David Mosley reaches on an air. Mason with a base hit. Strike out to Joshua Gordon. Ford walks. James Marlin walks. Kay Lambert with a double. A one-two pitch. Fly ball. Left field down the line. See if the win will take that one. The left fielder can't make the catch. It's up against the wall. Run is in. It's 18-7. to seven. Again, the wind took it. The left fielder had it for a second, but hit the wall when it bounces out. It's a double for Mason Robertson. And Wayne leads 18-7. Another double for Mason Robertson. Another ball that the wind took. Again, the left fielder made a great effort. Garrison Price had it for a moment when he hit that wall. The ball comes out of his glove and a double for Mason. Here's Joshua Gordon. Another runner in scoring position at second base. Wayne, 11 runs in the inning, lead at 18-7. Chance for more here. Here's the stretch and the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike one. No balls, one strike. On deck, four towns. No balls, one strike, two outs. Wayne, 18. Buford, 7. More than inning, 11 runs in. The pitch. Round ball off the pitcher's mind in the left field. Another run's going to score. Josh Gordon's going to hold it first base. And we'll check the pitcher, see if he's okay. As that ball ricocheted off him and rolled into left field. And we'll see if he's okay. But another run in for Wayne County makes it 19-7. to Which means they can score two and we still win by a 10 in the bottom of the fifth. That'll go as a base hit. Here's Ford Townsend. And, again, they're checking his hand because that's where it ricocheted off. It went right off his right hand. They're going to let him throw a few, I think, just to make sure he's okay. Wayne County, a 12-run inning. Lead at 19-7. to Smiley, fortune teller, said it would be a high-scoring affair. Two more points. We'll have a third touchdown of the game. 21-7. Be a nice score. <laughs> Smiley said, in any number two, 
He looked at me and he said, this is going to be a high-scoring affair. And never were true words spoken today than that from Mr. Smiley McGregor, the PA announcer. He said it'll be a high-scoring game, and it is, 19-7. Here's four times him. Here's the stretch in the pitch, and it's in for a strike. No ball was one strike. Wayne County, 19. Buford, 7. 12 runs in the fifth. Here's the stretch in the 0-1 pitch. And there's a ground ball. Hit the short, and it's going to end the inning. They step on the bag, and how the drama begins. Wayne County scores 12 runs in the inning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits. A couple errors. One man left. We are three outs away from going to the round of Elite Eight. Your score, Wayne County 19, Buford 7. One of the worst feelings in the world is when your vehicle lets you down and leaves you stranded on the side of the road. We'll put your mind at ease because Grant Lewis Towing is available 24 hours a day with towing service locally or long distance. When you need a tow, call a pro. Call Grant Lewis Towing at 427-0857. You heard right. When you need a tow, call the pro and put your mind at ease. No time to stress. It's no longer a mess. Help us just phone call away. Grant Lewis Towing, over 40 years experience and available whenever needed. Call Grant Lewis Towing for all your towing needs. Again, the number 427-0857. Call Grant Lewis by request. The number to call 427-0857. Hurricane's Convenience Store and Cafe is now open seven days a week, located at 105 Henson Mosley Road and features a convenient drive through window. Hurricane's is locally owned and operated by Ron Truly and his family and is running to serve the Wayne and surrounding counties with breakfast, lunch, and dinner with great meals and great prices. Hurricane's is your one-stop shop convenience store with gasoline and restaurant inside, providing biscuits in the morning, hot dogs, hamburgers, and chicken wings in the afternoon. Hurricane has arrived. It's now open seven days a week for your convenience. Once again, stop by any time for a family good time. This is your Sheriff, John Carter. Wishing the best for the Jackets this baseball season. Just as hard work, commitment, and experience are the keys to reaching your goals on the field, they are also the keys to the successful operation of your Sheriff's Office. Go get them, Jackets, all season long. This is your Sheriff, John Carter, proudly serving our community. Wayne County Baseball brought to you by Prime South Bank and Magic Mattress. Here we go. Two outs. I'm sorry, three outs or three runs, what's going to come first? If they get three runs, we play another inning. If they get three outs, we win. If they get two runs and three outs, we win. 2-0 pitch from Gantt Starlin. In for a strike, 2-1. 8-9-1. and one. Eight, eight, nine, and one. Grant James, the shortstop, leads it off here in the bottom of the fifth of Griffin High School. Here's the wind, the 2-1 pitch. Low ball, 3-3-1. Three, three and one. Again, please, not a leadoff walk to start this fifth inning. With a 19-7 lead. Please, no walks. 3-1 pitch. And ball, nope, he calls strike two. Three and two. Three balls, two strikes. Payoff pitch is due to Grant James, the shortstop. The 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. And Wayne County is two outs away from moving on to the Elite Eight. Don't forget tonight. Designer Bingo at Wayne County High School Commentary. Doors open at 6. Again, you can purchase a ticket there. If you come out to the ballpark, you won't get one in the concession stand for $30. Mother's Day right around the corner. This would be a perfect gift for mom. So, again, that's tonight's student council with Designer Bingo at 6 o'clock at the Commons area. Tickets available at the door tonight. Gantz, wine and pitch up high, ball one. 1-0. One oh. Christian Griffin, the batter, right fielder. Wayne County, two outs away from a big, big win here in game three. Ground ball to third. Crosby's got it. Throws to first. We're one out away from the win. Two up, two down in the bottom of the fifth. Here's Austin Turner. Wayne County's Gantt starting now in his familiar closer role. A chance to close it out. Closed out game two against Jones. Closed out game three. Picked up the win in that game against Jones. Chance to get a big out here and give this win to himself. Gantt start. Another win in state playoff action in game three. Austin Turner, 0 for 3 in this game. Pitches down low, ball one. I don't think this is Turner, though. No Cole Gunner, 19. So a pinch hitter here. There's the pitch down low, ball two. So he's just getting people to come in. So Griffin, I'm sorry, Buford, I keep calling Griffin. Buford's going to the bench here. 19 7 Wayne County. We're one out away from the win. Gans Starlin trying to close it out. Two balls, no strikes. The 2 0 pitch. Inside ball three. 3 0. On deck. Garrison Price, the left fielder. 
the 3 0 pitch. In for a strike, three and one. Three balls, one strike, 19 7. Wayne County leads it here in game three. The 3 1 pitch. Down low, a, bump, a walk with two outs. Brings up Garrison Price on deck, Noah Lifford. Number two, Garrison Price. Yeah, they can score two. They can't score three. They score three, we go to the sixth. Wayne, 19. Buford, seven. One out away from the win and the series. Stretch and the pitch. In for a strike. No ball with one strike. Gant starting, young sophomore, trying to close it out and pick up the win on the mound. The stretch in the 0-1 pitch. Just missed, one and one. One ball, one strike, two outs. Wayne, 19. Buford, 7. The 1-1 pitch. Breaking pitch, called ball, 2. 2-1. Two, two balls, one strike, two outs. Again, starting ready, the 2-1 pitch. Round ball, right side, base hit. Inning continues, two men on, two men out for Noah Ledford. Again, here's Ledford. Again, if they score two runs, it's okay. If they score three runs, we're going to play a sixth inning. And number three. Again, we've got to close this team out. Do not give this team any life whatsoever. They came back from a 7-2 deficit. Right now, they're down by 12, 19-7. Again, Starling and Wayne County looking for the third and final out of this inning. The stretch and the pitch. Rounded foul. No balls. One strike. Again, it's Wayne Carrollton. We'll have to wait for a coin flip to determine where the series will be played. Both are one seeds in that bracket. No balls. One strike. Two outs. The 0-1 pitch. Down low. Ball one. One and one. One ball. One strike. Two outs. The 1-1 pitch. High ball two. Two and one. Two balls, one strike, two outs, 19-7. And out, we'll close it out. The 2-1 pitch. Low ball three, three and one. On deck. Number 21, Will Westmore. Three balls, one strike, two outs. 3-1 pitch. Swung on and foul back. Full count. Three balls, two strikes, two eyes. Down to the final pitch. Wayne trying to close it out here in game three. Crowd on its feet, looking for out number three. The 3-2 three, pitch. Popped him up. Left field, Mason. Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon says he's got it, and he does, and Wayne County's got the series. Oh, how sweet it is. It's a winner, a winner, chicken dinner in game three. The celebration on at the pitcher's mound, and Wayne County is knocked out. The University of Buford. The final score, Wayne 19, Buford 7 in five innings in game three. What a comeback for Wayne. What a inning for Wayne in the fifth. A 12-run inning and win it by a final of 19 to 7. Final score, Wayne 19, Buford 7. Back with the Country Financial Post Game Show right after the timeout. <laughs> Damon's Restaurant is open seven days a week and offers daily specials and has a wide variety of menu items from salads to wings to burgers and fries and check out their famous turkey burger. Damon's is famous for their variety of sauces, mild, wild, insane, or inferno. When it comes to party platters, Damon's can make your party special. Simply call in the order ahead of time by calling 588-WING, 588-9464. Damon's famous fears and wings continues to please its customers. And if you're looking for a great meal any day of the week, stop by and enjoy Damon's. You stop in or use the drive through at the location 336 West Cherry Street. That's Damon's Restaurant, a Wayne County favorite. At Bronter's Landfill, keeping our communities safe is the most important thing we do. Our local team of environmental managers, engineers, and scientists ensure that the long-term management of the landfill is safe for our workers, customers, and the environment. To learn more, visit our website at www.bronterslandfill.com. Or you can go to the website, click Visit Us, and sign up for a tour to see firsthand how we operate. We hope to see you soon. 
State Farm, this is Mike. Hey, uh, I'm wondering if there's a way you can help me protect my Betty. Is that your girlfriend? <laughs> nah, it's my mountain bike. I'd suggest a renter's policy. If you've got an auto policy with State Farm, you can add renter's insurance for the price of a good bike lock. You can protect Betty, Sherry, Amanda, whoever. Oh, Amanda's my keyboard. <laughs> I don't know my girlfriend's name. Add renter's insurance to your auto policy and get to a better state. State Farm. Contact State Farm agent David Earl Keith at 427-2019. Wayne Memorial Hospital wishes our Yellow Jacket baseball team the best of luck this season. We appreciate all of your hard work and dedication. And just like our Steve athletes, we strive to be the best. Teamwork is the hallmark of any successful organization. And at Wayne Memorial Hospital, teamwork is our middle name. At Wayne Memorial Hospital, we work together to make you feel like an all-star. Wayne Memorial Hospital, the official health care provider of the Yellow Jackets. One of the worst feelings in the world is when your vehicle lets you down and leaves you stranded on the side of the road. We'll put your mind at ease because Grant Lewis Towing is available 24 hours a day with towing service locally or long distance. When you need a tow, call a pro. Call Grant Lewis Towing at 427-0857. You heard right. When you need a tow, call the pro and put your mind at ease. No time to stress. It's no longer a mess. Help is just a phone call away. Grant Lewis Towing, over 40 years experience and available whenever needed. Call Grant Lewis Towing for all your towing needs. Again, the number 427-0857. Call Grant Lewis by request. The number to call 427-0857. Stop credit harassment today. Stop the worry of a pending repossession, garnishment, or foreclosure. Contact the bankruptcy group, attorney R. Flake Cabinets, for an experienced assessment of your financial situation. They have locations in Brunswick, Hazelhurst, and now Jessup. They are a debt relief agency. They help people file for bankruptcy relief. Contact legal assistant Tanya Blanton at 912-375-5620. 375-5620 to set up your free consultation. Let the bankruptcy group do the worrying for you. Now serving Jessup. Hi, this is Jackie Dean from Hinesville Home Center. We at Hinesville Home Center want to wish the Yellow Jackets a successful season. So come see me, Jackie Dean, at Hinesville Home Center on the big curve as you come into Hinesville or call me at 912-876-2215. That's 912-876-2215. Remember, I will be other dealers' prices. So come see me. Go Jackets. Communication is the key when it comes to business, especially your financial business. That's why Altamaha Federal Credit Union makes communication a priority, making banking easier for you. AFCU has money to lend, and it's easy to apply online or with a quick phone call. Your local credit union with open lines of communication. Altamaha Federal Credit Union. Jessup, Scriven, and Ludowisi. Visit Altamaha.org. Equal housing lender, federally insured by NCUA. Does your car or truck need a paint job, body repair, or even a tow? Call the experts at Lightsey's Body Shop. Family owned and operated since 1978. With a courteous, knowledgeable, and professional staff, we'll meet all your needs at Lightsey's Body Shop, where everybody is somebody. Call us today. Let us take the stress away. We are located at 1526 Rainier Road, just past the dollar store. Give us a call at 385-6193. That's 385-6193. Lightsey's Body Shop. Two pitch. Popped him up. Left field. Mason. Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon says he's got it. And he does. And Wayne Cunning's got the series. Welcome okay. back to the Country Financial Post Game Show. We've got a lot of players here. Happy times here for Wayne County. Historic game. Historic inning in the fifth. 12 run fifth. Cade Lambert, the junior outfielder, joins us. Cade, your bat's been hot. We we'll talked about it a couple times when we talked to you last time. Told you your bats improved more than anybody on this team. Two big doubles in game three. How's this? Win against Buford Field. It feels great, man. I mean, a celebration on the mound. I mean, could you, did you ever imagine when they came back and tied at 7 7, we'd explode for 12 runs? I mean, that's amazing. No, sir, I didn't, I didn't imagine that, but I figured we'd win the game. But super. What was the attitude coming into game three? I mean, I saw several players, I mean, it looked like business as normal. Everybody acted like they got a good night's sleep and really won this game pretty bad. Yes, sir, we came into the game ready to play. Season continues. Hopefully we'll get that coin flip and get it here home against Carrollton. But how does it feel to knock off Buford? Everything you heard about Buford, all those state titles? It's just a name. Just a name. Well, congratulations, Kate Lambert. Great job. Let's get James Marlin in here. James, another one of those young sophomores that contributes. And James, again, you've been hitting the ball hard all day. Got a few to finally go through. But how does it feel to knock off Buford? Feels great. Uh, I'm proud of my team. And uh, we just did a good job of hitting. What was going on in the dugout when the 7-2 lead vanished? We came in for the top of fifth. Was anything said? Uh, what were the feelings like? I know the feel up here was oh, a little dejected. A 7-2 lead just vanished. We were going to score runs. Score runs. Well, good, Dad. Congratulations. What do you think about next week? 
We're going to do the same thing? Sounds good. Well, congratulations. Let's get Joshua Gordon in here. Again, Josh, I cheated you out of two strikeouts yesterday. Smiley, my math was never good, but it was a 12-strikeout performance and a three-hitter against you for the game two, and that really set the tone for this game. But, again, you had a home run in game one. You pitched game two. You come through with some hits here in game three. How does this feel? You make the final out. You catch the ball out there with the wind. We saw what kind of havoc the wind was causing on the fly balls. How were you able to haul that one in there to close it out? Just kept my eye on it the whole time. Knew the wind. Knew what I had to do. Knew I had to catch it going in advance into the league eight. Well, let's go back to game two because I said we let the lead slip away in game one. Felt like we had game one in hand. It slips away, but you get that ball just like you did against Jones County. What's your mindset? Got to got to go out there and compete every pitch. Got to hit my spots. Know that know when to throw the ball, where to throw the ball, at the, what time to throw it to. It's just, just got to go out and compete every pitch. Again, I kept telling everybody during the broadcast, it sounds better the more I say it. Three hitter, 12 strikeouts, 5-1 over Buford. Just a great performance, and congratulations on this win here today, and I'm sure we'll see you on the mind against Carrollton. Yes, sir. Enjoy, right. enjoy the weekend. Yes, sir. You too. Let's get young sophomore Cooper Martin in here. It all began with an infield bunt, Cooper. Did you know you were going to bunt when you get up there in the fifth inning in a tie game, or what was the, what was the story? Uh, yes, sir. I knew I had to get something started. I was just glad to be able to start the beginning. Again, that good speed, get on base, and then it just went from there. Twelve runs. Did, yes, you, did you ever imagine anything like that? No, sir. I was just trying to get one. Again, just uh, some tough breaks in that other games. Again, we thought we had the guy throwing out second base. Talk to you, you thought for sure mostly threw him out. We didn't get that call, and then things went against us in game number one. But the bounce back again here in game two and game three. But to come in here game three, I'm just curious about you. What did you do last night? How early did you get up? Uh, what was your mindset coming to the ballpark? I got up and uh, thought about being ready for the game. Just knew we had to come. We had the momentum. Just ready to get a sword. How about the crowd? Did you feed off the crowd? Yes, sir. We have a good crowd. Glad. Well, again, you just gained a valuable experience. Now, this is your sophomore season, but you yes, continue sir. to come up with big plays, big hits, and again, mm-hmm. that big triple. I'll get at you about the triple. Yes, sir. All the way to the monster mm-hmm. with the wind blowing the other way. How, how well did you hit that ball? Uh, I was sitting on it, and he threw it right where I was. I won it, and it felt good. I mean, Turner is one heck of a center fielder. To get it over his head, you got to really tag that ball, and you yes, did sir. just that. Yes, sir. When did you know you were going to third? So when you saw it went over uh, Turner's head? or I saw him running back, and I was just trying to get there. Well, again, just a great hit in that inning. Congratulations on a great performance. Thank you. Thank you, Cooper. Let's get J.T. Crosby. J.T. Crosby pitched game one and pitched a great game. Could have won game one easily. But, again, had to shake it off and come over the bat and did just that, JT. Getting a couple of big hits here in this game. Had a big hit in that 12-run inning. How's that feel, seeing all those runs just jump up on that board in that fifth after they tied at 7-7? It feels good. It boosts our confidence for sure. Again, it looks like you had everything in control. Just been game one, pitching extremely well. Looked like they had trouble with the breaking pitch. Was that the scouting report on Buford? No, it's just it's just my pitch, and you know when I executed, it worked. Well, how's it feel in your junior year, and we're moving on to the Elite Eight? It feels good, Mr. Vile. Well, again, hopefully we'll play it at home against Carroll today. Yes, I'm not sure. I don't know when they're going to do that coin toss, but again, congratulations on a great day. Thank you, great sir. game in game one. I'm sure we'll see you on the mound against that Carrollton team as well. Yes, sir. Let's get Griffin Boykin. Man, what a moment for Griffin Boykin in Game 3. A grand salami, Griffin Boykin. And you tattooed that ball. I don't know what he threw you, but you jumped all over it. Uh, yes, sir. It was a good pitch and just four runs out of the 19. And I'll tell you what, it was a big grand slam, but it, unfortunately it vanished in 7-7. Seven, seven. You had to come back with some other big runs. But what's, what was going through the mind? I'm curious. Now, we're up 7-2. They come back 7-7. Seven, seven. The lead's gone. Tom the fifth, brand new game. Was anything said? What was going on? Uh, we knew we had it. We're in county baseball. We knew how to come back. We're... Uh, we always lose the first game, or not always, but we have, and we know how to come back. We're a relentless team, and we know how to get it done. So, but it, one thing about this team, they never quit. That's what I love about them. It doesn't matter what the situation is. Even that game one was 10-6 with a time under plate with a chance to possibly come back and win that game. But how does it feel? I, I just got to be honest. griffin has got one home run, and then boom, the grand slam. So what did he throw you? Uh, he threw me a fastball inside, and I knew it was my pitch, and I'm lucky enough and blessed enough to get over the fields. Well, I don't think that one was wind aided. I think that one was gone, no matter what the wind was. Congratulations on a great hit and a great series. We'll see you against Carrollton. Uh, yes, sir. Thank Keep you. that smile. Let's get David Mosley, another one of these young sophomores. Now, I imagine he's wore out. Three games behind the plate. That's got to be tough. Yes, sir. How's it feel, David? It feels good. Tell us about our pitching staff. Again, we talked about how the pitching rules really came into play in this series. Again, we had to use just about everybody we had, but how they do today? All of them did good. Every pitch, every play. Uh, 
Yep. It's about four and Gant. JT did a good job in the first game, but they squeezed him out of it. I mean, yeah, I don't want to get you in trouble, but let's go back to game one because I talked to the coaches last night, and they said, look, all those pitches that JT threw were, you know, what everybody in the gut – Excuse me, in the dugout, I thought were strikes because they were asking you, where's the pitch? Where's the pitch? And supposedly they got upset. The umpires got upset because they said you can't ask where the pitch was. And Barry Bryant said, well, you got to be kidding. we got to find out what location it is. So was it frustrating yesterday in game one? Yes, sir. I mean, JT was in the spots and then the umpire wasn't calling it. Right. It looked like some of those pitches, same thing here in game two and three, but nothing you can, can't control that. But how did it feel to be able to swing the bat today? Got that big hit on the base and then they made that error, so it just kind of ignited that inning. But, again, you're doing a great job behind the plate. Again, I still think you had the guy thrown out in that first game. That could have turned the whole game around as well. But uh, it is what it is. The good news is we're moving on to game against Carrollton next week. So we'll see you there. But get some rest. I'm getting three games in two days behind the plate. That's going to be tough. Yes, sir. How's your legs feel? Pretty okay. good. Pretty good. Well, congratulations, David. Thank you. Let's get four times in here. Started the game, three today. Again, I said at four times, it's four times. Were you okay? It looked like you were pretty good in the first couple innings forward. But, again, they pulled you, but you stayed focused in the end game. But how's it feel to beat this University of Buford team? Oh, man, no better feeling in the world. We were in it for all three games, and this is the, some of the greatest baseball I've ever been a part of. You know, I kept telling you guys all week, and every time I go in that locker room, this is historic stuff here. To play Buford, to be able to knock them out with all those championship trophies they've got up there in Buford. And they came in here. They made it to the finals last year, one of the year before. They were confident they were going to come in here and just roll the dice and walk out with the wins, but it wasn't that way, was it? No, sir. It came our way today, and uh, it's just a big win. Big so, win. How was the celebration? How's, yeah, how's the fans? I'll ask you about the crowd support. Did you feed off the crowd? Yes, sir. They were in it every game, and that's what we need next week. You played a lot of games. I want to ask you, what was the mood when it, the 7-2 lead vanished? 7-7, seven, seven, brand new game in the fifth. What was, was anything discussed, anything said? Did anybody regroup or just business as usual? Don't stop. That's what we built off of. Don't stop and don't quit. Don't stop and don't quit. Well, congratulations on the big win. We'll yes, see sir. you next week against Carrollton. Let's get Gans Darling here because Gans Darling, I don't know if you know this, Mr. Starlin, but the win, as far as the official win in the pitching category, goes to you. Same as game three against Jones County. You get the win in game three against Jones. You get the win here against Buford. How did it feel going out there on the mound, looking up there knowing you're up by 12? Uh, great job by our team. Uh, you know, uh, come out and hit uh, in that the last few innings. Uh, had a big inning, and uh, I appreciate them appreciate getting the lead for me. And, you know, believe in him and you go back out there and do what I do. Well, you did a good job again to get that win in game three. Congratulations. Another sophomore on this team. So <clears throat> moving on to the Elite Eight. How's that sound? It's awesome. I've never been a part of it. Well, we'll see you next week. I appreciate it. Let's get who we got next. Bear Brown, you going to come talk? Coach Mullins, who wants to come next? Bear Brown, one of our pitching coaches here. And let's talk about. Smiley made a good point. This is the one series where the pitching rules really came into effect. Again, Buford looked like they ran out of pitching. looked like we had more pitching than they did down the stretch. But how do you jockey the pitching? And how does it go? It's tough because you know you get you want to win the first game, but you got to be smart enough to save pitching for the second game and the third game if there is one. Um, but those guys, I mean, JT and, and Gordon went out there and they pitched their tails off for two games. You know what I mean? For them to go as deep as they did in the game and give us a chance to win those games like they did, that helps tremendously because that's one thing we feel like we've got an advantage on other teams is we've got deep pitching. We've got three guys we can send out there for three games that we feel like are going to compete and give us a great chance to win. Um, so it's tough trying to, you know, balance when do you take them out, when do you put them in, when do you use their pitches. Uh, do you use them twice in one day? Do you use them two days in a row? Who do you get to? you got so many good options on this team that it's uh, it's a tough decision, but it's one that we feel like we put anybody out there to compete for us. I'm always curious what kind of conversation goes on when you go out to the mound to talk to a pitcher. I usually just sit on down. What do you ask? Yeah, I try to, you know, I want to go out there. I don't really, a lot of times I don't know what I'm going to say when I get out there. I'm just trying to slow the game down a little bit. Uh, that's definitely something I've noticed these guys. You know, they're young young kids that are playing a game that speeds up in a hurry. Uh, so I just try to go down there, slow the game down a little bit, and make them understand if you execute the pitches, uh, you get a chance to get these guys out. So normally just slow it down, maybe give them a, some advice on maybe an adjustment to make to get them back where they need to be with some of their pitches if they're leaving the fastballs up or their sliders up or something. You know, um, they all have their unique styles and things, different tips for each one. But, um, you know, just mainly slowing it down for them and, and trying to calm them down you know, keep them from getting too hyped up or too down on yourself. Okay, Barrett. Well, congratulations again. See you next week against Carrollton. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Hey, coach Jordan Mullison here, another one of the pitching coaches and first base coach. And, Coach, uh, again, the thing about this baseball team, they do not know how to quit. Forts hit the best. And it doesn't matter what the situation is. Even in the first game down 10-6, had the time under the plate and lost a 7-2 lead. Didn't matter. Come up and score 12 runs. On the, I've been a part of it for a long time. I'm trying to remember more. Favorite inning to score 12 at a tie tie game against Buford at home. I mean, I'll never forget this inning. I mean, we'll know this for the rest of our lives. What an inning. Yeah, I thought I, we talked before the game and we said that, you know, game three is usually a one to nothing game or a 15 to 10 game. And, uh, 
That, that's the thing about that locker room right now is that since we've been on the street, we got a bunch of guys come to work every day, do what they're supposed to do, and we let them go. And, uh, you know, they, they're going to have beginnings like that, especially in big moments. And that's why we try to make them do all the things right. They're in their vacuum in that locker room right now. You know, we made them do it last night. And we're glad to see that, you know, those guys come through, you know, guys that were slumping had some big hits in that inning, you know, some guys at bottom of the order hit grand slams and doubles in the gap. And, and when you beat a team like Buford, you know, game three, that's what you got to have. And, um, you know, we still we didn't we didn't pitch as well today as we thought we should. You know, but like I said, well, any time you hit, you know, that covers us up a little bit. Again, a 12 run inning will do wonders for a team. Again, especially after a 7-2 lead finish, they tied 7-7. Put in the bracket, we play Carrollton. I guess the coin flip will take place Monday. Is that That's right? That's right. When's the series expected to begin? Uh, Wednesday, Thursday. Wednesday, Thursday. Well, hopefully, we'll get to host it here, but we'll find out how that coin flip goes. But again, congratulations, doing a great job. Yeah. Again, these kids don't quit. If you can find Mason, I can't believe Mason's not up here. I got to talk to my senior Mason, so go find me Mason Robertson if you can. I'll we'll talk about that big home run he hit yesterday and a couple of big hits he had here today. But let's get Coach Justin McDonald. Coach, uh, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Not many people can say they run a little Buford. Yeah. I mean, some people can say they beat him, but yeah. uh, I don't know if anybody's run a him in quite some time. I mean, that was, yeah. that was quite a performance there in the fifth. Yeah, it was. And, and, you know, last night I talked to our kids in the locker room, and, and I, that's, I heard a lot of that when, from my coming up to here last night to go back to the locker room where you beat Buford. And I, I, we told the kids that that's not enough. And uh, you can beat them, but, but to win a series and then definitely win it the way we've done. And I've been here nine years, and I haven't seen an offensive display. And you think about some of the players that come through here. I haven't seen an offensive display in an inning like that, and I don't know if I've ever seen it in high school baseball. So, uh, again, that's a tribute to our kids, and, and, and like Coach Muller said, how hard they work and how they do the little things right and keep their lockers clean and, and make sure their cleats are clean, make sure their pants are clean. And it's all paying off, and uh, I hope they understand that. I hope that the parents understand that. But, again, just proud of everybody. Not only the inning, but the fact that it came after they came back from a 7-2 deficit. They yeah. scored two in the third and three in the yeah. fourth to make it a 7-7 seven, seven game yeah. and then come in a brand new game in the fifth and have the explosion that we just saw and it all began with an infield bunt by Cooper Martin. Right. Did, you, did you have Cooper bunt in that uh, Well, he's, he has an option every time and like I said, we, we thought coming in, we had to in the first two games, we didn't make the third baseman and field many balls and, uh, and and watching them take infield outfield, we thought he could have been a kind of a liability for him and again, it kind of it kind of paid off of, of, of him bunting it down the first baseline and, and getting, getting out of the box hard but again, like I said, the tempo sitting there and, and the energy that was in this place and in that dugout was was heck I, that's something you won't forget for a lifetime. So, uh, but 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 we're not finished. So we got to keep going. Right. Well, you asked for the crowd to show up. They showed up in big time. And again, the kids talked about how much they appreciated that. So, yeah. hopefully, we'll win that coin toss and yeah. get that next year's and we're going to bracket here right now. It's Lucas Grove, the winner of Game Three between the Red Mountain McIntosh, Wayne County, Carrollton, his set Stars Mill, Decatur. Loganville and all us trying to game three today. Again, a lot of rain up there and the game three between East Pauling and veterans, but yeah. that's on the right side. The left side is Wayne County Carrollton, and the Wayne County Carrollton winner gets the winner of Locust Grove, last year state champion in McIntosh or Rabia Mine. Yeah. So it's nice to be in that Elite Eight. It is, and, 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 and as, as you know, Elite Eight baseball, and, and we're, <laughs> I guess we're suspects still. Anything can happen. I remember having a 6 2 lead here going into the seventh with two outs. and and, and not winning. So again, you get you get in that round, and 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 you have a little bit of energy and a little bit of motivation, and and anything can happen. But like I said, I heck, I got kind of emotional after this one because you, you you beat teams like that. That don't happen. And uh, you know that that. But but like I said, we expected to do it. It's an expectation here to to win those games and, and win playoff series. But again, crowd was crowd was awesome, and uh, I I hope we get to play here and 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 have those guys come back. And I know this place will be filled up a little bit more in round three. So. Uh, but if it's on the road, we'll just have to pack up and, and, and take the show on the road and encourage everybody to come with us. Well, we'll be where it is, but again, hopefully it'll be here next week at Howard Bay Warrenville, which has been electric here the last couple yeah. of weeks with uh, five That's full so wins over Jones County and a big 12 run inning. I said, Carrie Beth Hosman made it to the game, so we can explode for 12 runs. <laughs> and she's our lucky charm. We can yeah. get her, yeah. load her up, take her to Carroll, yeah. so we go there. Yeah, or it. But anyway, yeah. just a great day. I've got to talk about your two seniors before you get out of here yeah. that played, because we talk about them extending their season. There's so much going on. Junior, senior prom, senior night, the whole nine yards. But, again, just can't say enough about your seniors. And this one, which is coming up here, I'm going to talk to him. That home run he hit yeah. with the wind blowing the other way was just phenomenal yesterday. And for Gordon to go out there and give you another 5-1 performance, I said at the time it sounded like deja vu, the 5-1 mm-hmm. game two against Jones, 5-1 game two against Buford. It could have been yeah. a good sign. It turned out to be a good yeah. sign. Yeah. But, uh, Again, yeah. talk about that home run that Mason had and the no. performance you got out of Josh Gordon in game two. Yeah, you know, baseball is a crazy game, and I guess Mason was kind of struggling, kind of beat this up, up in that game, and, and 
And I'm a firm believer, and I talk to our kids all the time. If you, if you have that mentality, baseball's going to find you. It's going to put you right back in the situation that that you failed in before. And I I, I believe he had three. I think he had three three at bats with bases loaded. That at bat started with bases loaded. That ball called. But again, they found him and he come through. And that's what seniors do on great high school teams. And again, Josh Gordon, uh, the competitive nature he has, and, and the way he goes out and co- competes and commands his own. You you can ask, you can ask for no better seniors on the field right now that that are, are doing their thing. And uh, like I said, they're leading this team, and the, and, the, and the guys are, are right behind them. And like I said, it's I'm happy for them because they, their, their career was on the line. It was it was hanging in the air for two straight weeks, and, and both of those guys play major roles in, in us moving on. And uh, that's all you can ask. The coin flip, where would it take place? Uh, Are you I, going to have to drive halfway, or how's that work? Well, i got to get with their coach, supposedly, and if we can agree on, on how to do it, we will. If not, Georgia High School will step in. But uh, I guess it ain't really a nice halfway point when it's five, six hours away. So I was going to say, if you're going, I'm going to go watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, sure I know with the social media type stuff now, you can – you can probably do it live or something like that, but uh, like I said, we'll we'll figure it out again. I'm not too good on this thing, so I'm not looking. I'm not looking forward to it. But, uh, Let us know as soon as you find out. I will. I will. I think you might hear me scream if if we win and we're there. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, it's. I just, I'd love uh, to have it here. Yeah, like I said, that crowd has been electric the last couple of nights. So it is. Fun. I'm yeah. sure we'll pack it up for yeah. Elite Eight. Yeah, and they know anything about Carroll tomorrow? Oh, just know they're playing well. They, they, uh, they got, uh, we got a good friend that, that coaches at Central Carrollton, so I'm sure he'll let us know a little bit about them. But uh, like I said, uh, I guess everybody, when you get to this point, is good. So uh, they, they're, right, right, they're right there in the yeah. mix. Well, you're not going to see bad teams from this point forward. Yeah. Eight teams left. No, but again, right. congratulations. Historic. Inning yes. historic win over University of Buford. <laughs> sure does feel good to say yeah. they can run a them again. A lot of teams beat them, but yeah. not many say they can run a roll in five innings. Yeah. Well, you enjoy the weekend. I'm going to talk to your senior, Mason Rock, so i I got to get his in here. Because, again, this is a kid <clears throat> near and dear to my heart. Watching him play for four years, and I just want to talk about that home run you hit in game two, Mason. Again, I don't know if they were found it because you might have hit it to the library down there. <laughs> yeah, I was struggling to play it all day that day, and uh, I really needed that. And, uh, you know, I just uh, saw him pitch up, and... Uh, it was there for me. I know you and Josh want to continue this run, but again, your thoughts. I mean, you're a leader on this team. You had a 7-2 lead at Vanishes. You come in the fifth. It's a brand new game. I said, nobody said it was like just business as usual. Nothing said. You just go to work. Right. And uh, we've been playing really good baseball, and this was a good game series for us. And we was playing really well, pitching really well, hitting good. And uh, when it came back 7-7, we wasn't really worried. We knew we were going to get the job done. Well, that you did, my friend. Again, it's been a joy. I'm happy for you headed to the Elite Eight. Yes, Keep sir. it up. We'll see Carrollton hopefully here at Howard Bow. Hopefully. Great senior year. This is, yes, like I said, this is memories of a lifetime right here. Oh, yeah. I thought when we get my age, we'll sit around and talk about the three-run home run, the big view for the end game, too. I promise you. Congratulations. Appreciate it as well. Yeah, Wayne County wins it here. Final score again, 17-9, to 9, I do believe it was. Or, I'm sorry, 19-7. to 19-7. to 7. The final score won it by 12. A 12 run fifth for Wayne County. Grand slam by Griffin Boykin. Again, extra base hits in the game by Cade Lambert and Mason Robertson. A triple to the monster by Cooper Martin. Just a great, great win for Wayne County. Final score again Wayne County 19, Buford 7. Wayne County on to the Elite Eight. Sheffields will have your Elite Eight t shirts this week at Sheffield's Trophies and Sports Shop, one of our fine sponsors of Wayne County Yellow Jacket Baseball. Thanks to the listeners. Thanks to Jonathan back at the studio. Thanks again to our sponsors for allowing us to be here. Going to give them one final plug and then get out of here. Again, Hurricanes, Sheriff John Carter, Bainman's Famous Fingers and Wings, Pickley Group, your local grocery store, to Public Services, State Farm Agent, Gabriel O'Keefe, Wayne Memorial Hospital, Grant's Towing, Lacey's Body Shop, the Bank Bankruptcy Group, Hinesville Home Center, Altamont Federal Credit Union, Interstate Credit Union, Southside Automotive, Sheffield, Sybils, Boykin, Steel and Crane, 